Hi! Howdy do! Y'all? Good evening. Thank you, Wallens. My voice is still shot from the other night. It's like a combination of being sick and talking about Smash Tears for hours and hours. <laughs> it was silly. Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday. Sick again? Yeah, dude, I'm as mad as you are. Well, I don't know if you're mad, but I'm as... I'm as incredulous as you are i think it's just having a, a baby having a toddler is like having a petri dish that walks around all the time but also coughs in your mouth a lot toddlers don't have any scent like we're trying to get her to like cover her mouth she doesn't she doesn't get it you know <laughs> it's it's crazy hold on i just realized you you guys are in focus not me Ah, uh, there we go. Hi, let me adjust your eyeballs. There. I'm the star. Thank you, Caro. Oh, to claim your sub, exclamation point claim. Uh, you're gonna get a, uh, you're gonna get a code. And you can use that later on tonight. You'll know when. We'll talk about it, alright? Thank you, Lima Green. See, there you go. In the Moonlight, Chorizo, Hot Dog, Flash Beat, Ritzler, Damphoros, Wallens. Floor mat. Thank you. I'm your biggest fan, Coney. You think so? It's you? Unsubbed person? Hmm? Zero dollars given as tribute? <laughs> no, I'm your biggest fan. No, I am. No. <laughs> the cat jumping is very good. I'm your smallest fan. Get the fuck out of here then. What? He doesn't need money to show his appreciation. Yes, he does. I'm 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 like one of those old gods. I'm not like now god where it's like, alright, visit me once a week and then we're cool. No, I need like goats and shit. Put that shit on a sun altar. And that shit is like 50 bucks, but don't don't stab it because then I can't use it. <laughs> Hi everybody. Tonight's gonna be fun. I had this really cool idea where we'll, we're gonna watch YouTube videos together. You and me. Just us. Us two, personally. You, the person watching this, and me. We're gonna watch them together. How creative. I know! I thought you might like that. Your stream is lagging. Is that true? No, it's not. It's you. Watch Mojo? Not watch Mojo tonight. No mojo tonight. I like to leave. Watch mojo is my ultimate, and there's a long cooldown. I'm trying to make it longer. <laughs> Watch mojo is Coney's ult, and I'm trying not to pop it. It's still charging, but we're not there. Thank you, SL Blay. <laughs> uh, so the 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 video did well, which I'm really happy about. The Genesis video with the sponsor. Tomorrow is another YouTube video with a sponsor. But feel free to skip it if you want. <laughs> There's no obligation on that one. Carlito, what's good? Thank you for the prime. I, I think that's the I think that's the Carlito, the star of tonight. That's the movie we're watching. I got a whole bunch of stuff left over, but Carlito put up another banger. And honestly, one that I personally have been kind of interested in, even back when Diddy Kong Racing came out, because I was I was alive then. I was like, who the fuck is Drumstick? <laughs> and now I need to know. I think Drumstick, I'm pretty sure, and, and I, I don't want to be wrong about this, but if I'm not mistaken, he was the greatest kart racer on the island, uh, but now he's mentally ill, like he's crazy, because the, the pig cast a spell on him. I don't know if that's true. Something like that. We'll get We'll get the true story... From the, uh, the, 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 the Kong Nassour. The true expert. The Kong professor. Can we watch Lupin the Third? No. Where do you think you are? <laughs> you stumbled upon somebody else's stream? 
I'm crunch. I'm crunch. <laughs> Why you sound like that, though? Who is your guy's main in Diddy Kong? I actually, you know what's crazy? I beat. I should save this for the video. I'll say. I'll save it. I'll save it. Yeah, can you guys guess who I played in Diddy Kong Racing? There you go. Take a guess. <laughs> Everybody played Tip Top. So annoying. There's always Tip Top. All right, guess the game, bro. Uh, that shit kind of looked like. Is that Dark Souls, right? This looks like the opening. Oh my god, it's Dark Souls. No? It's secular. Yeah, alright. <sighs> Literally the same thing. This could have been any of them. This shit screams Dark Souls 2 to me. I don't know. I feel like they're they're uh, using the same games over and over now. They ran out of video games. This looks like the Arctic. Twin Snakes? Not scored yet. Early access. What? Lies of P? <laughs> What's early access? What the fuck am I looking at? What game is this? Is that Dark Souls? Valheim? Why does the meat look like this? This looks like RuneScape. I thought it was like a new game. What is this song? This is from Origami King? That's the gimmick. Valheim is this kind of game? What? Are we talking about the same game? What the fuck? No, I thought there was like a Viking game that was really popular that was like Rust. What, what am I thinking of? Valheim. No! No! It's like you, you're on a boat. You have a boat. You, you get on a boat. No, it's not Valheim. It has normal... No, it's not this. It has normal graphics. No! Raft. No! <laughs> it's Vikings! You guys are pissing me off. By the way, Hi-Fi Rush, pretty fun. I beat the first level, and I everybody was like, Oh my god, Kony, you're gonna hate the dialogue and the anime stuff. Listen, I don't mind it that much, actually. It's annoying. Like, it's it's like, but it's it's for kids. It's a cartoon. Right? Who cares? It's cartoony. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't, why would I get mad about that? I don't get mad about cartoons doing cartoon things. I get mad when an anime fan recommends me anime and says it's so deep and meaningful, and then the character's just doing one of three stock poses. Like, what are you deriving from this? You know what I mean? As long as we're not pretending this is high art. But the game's great. It's a very good game. Did you finish Pizza Tower? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I beat it off stream. Very good game. Sick game. I, I kept bumping into things, but I feel like it's supposed to be, like, you're supposed to be bad, so you go back and keep playing it. Thank you, Trocket Matt. Thank you, Seth Ozer. It's great. Very fun game. S rank every level. It's actually not that hard. I, I, I went back and I did one. Because you can loop back. And the loop goes back to the to the end. It's nice. Controls like shit, but good game. I, yeah, but I think it's on purpose. Because, like, it's supposed to control like shit because you don't have life in the game. And it's supposed to be, like, kind of bumpy and slapstick and cartoony, which is fine. But it, it, it was kind of jarring and annoying at first, yeah. When are you going to play Warrior Land 4? Never. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> That's dumb. Thank you, Amory2113. There is a pacifist rank, isn't there? There's a, I got a P rank on one of the bosses. I was like, huh? <laughs> I didn't even know there was a P. And he did like a fucking one of these. When are you going to play Pikmin 2? I'm literally doing it off stream. I started right now. And you want to know why I started? Actually, hold on. While we're talking about YouTubers, hold on. Fellows. The reason I started is because of this Leon Massey movie. He, he just plays through a bunch of games in his backlog, and one of them is Pikmin. Love Leon Massey movies. But he did say Bioshock 2 
was a 5 out of 10. So what the fuck does he know? He doesn't know what he's talking about. He said he didn't like Watam. Which made me sad because I liked Watam. But he, he, he said a different game existed. Like a Pokemon Snap, but with like cosmic horror or something. Yeah. Something like that. Lovely Amazi. Bioshock is not fun in current year. He mentioned something that I agree with where it's like, if you play, every time you play Bioshock, you're going to find a new thing to not like about it. Does that make sense? Like, I don't, I, I didn't remember. By the way, ads in 10 seconds, I don't skip the first ones. So, here you go. If you don't want ads, Prime, Sub, whatever. Uh, I never realized that in the first Bioshock, that that part after Andrew Ryan, but before the final boss, is long. It's like a third of the game. I forgot that. Because, like, you think about the... Uh, I think about, like, the fish, the freezer area, Fort Frolic, uh, Arcadia, I think, is, like, the, the, the national park thing. There's so much stuff. And then you kill Ryan, and then it's like, oh, you got all this stuff. And the apartment idea is cool, but... Played Bioshock for the first time last summer and loved it. So glad I went in blind. I think if you don't know anything about Bioshock, it's still probably a great run. And I think no game has done, like, the whole audio log thing better. Literally nobody. Shit is amazing. Like, the, the voice acting is great. The writing is phenomenal. You don't have to stop and read it. My friend hates uh, Bioshock, but... And I, I get why. Oh, speaking of my friend... <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw this tweet. So my friend brought up uh, my... <laughs> Back in the day, and I've talked about my exploits in this game a lot, that I, I've never actually shown them on stream, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> we used to play a lot of WWE online games just to fuck with people and piss them off. And uh, he found this video footage of uh, the finishers that we used to make. <laughs> oh, what a painful kick! <laughs> I'm so dizzy. I'm so dizzy. We really wanted him to just put the guy back down. We we couldn't find anything. Like, we wanted to pick them up and twirl them around and disorient them and then put them back down. But we didn't have anything. But, th but the third one is the best one. There are three of these. <laughs> He's obviously not feeling too threatened, JR. Whatever it takes to win. And I hope you're not trying to say that like it's a bad thing. No comment, LaFondre. Believe me, I have no desire Whoa. to see Vince McMahon's bad side again. He's just kicking there him in the goes, dick JR. eight times. By the way, you should definitely get DQ. The ref blood. is right there. Billions but this one's my favorite. Portraits. The speed at which he goes down oh, what a is still funny to me. The speed at which he... Boom, like, it's still extremely funny to me. It's so stupid. I love this shit. My friend and I would play in online matches, and one of us would do one of these finishers, and then the other guy would pin his partner. Where did you get video of these? He actually has them uploaded. Uh, hold on. We, have, we used to make custom entrances, too. Oh my god, I forgot you can't do this on Twitter anymore. We used to make custom entrances, and you could like, you could just like link them together. So we had him as like a sexy diva, and then we had him with this clock. Because <laughs> I thought it was funny, there's a giant clock in the game. <laughs> and he does that for a while. Uh, and then... This whole video is terrific. He's actually, yeah, time wizard. This sequence, by the way, of him shaking with the stick and the... We, we would roleplay as Vince McMahon in, like, the mic, 
But then one time we found a guy that role played back as Randy Savage, and that was a terrific night. <laughs> oh yeah, it doesn't even cut away, and then he's falling. I forgot about that. Uh, it was pretty good. There's another entrance, though. Uh, yeah, this one here. But he recorded this in his house <laughs> nine years ago. And I asked him to re-record it, you know, for, like, remaster it. <laughs> so, uh, we're gonna, we're, I'm, I'm waiting for him to re-upload it, because he has the stuff. We're waiting on the remaster, yeah. But it was a very good time. All right, uh, ads are done. Let's watch some movies. Okay. Tonight's YouTube night. And boy, howdy, do I got a lot of movies. Oh, baby. But of course, there is one that stands among the rest just taller than everyone else. All right? This is the number one movie. Our feature presentation. I'm not ending with it. So, in case you guys didn't see, a few weeks ago, we watched a movie from a strong, rising up-and-coming YouTuber that we were a big fan of, and that is Young Carlito, right here. Carlito just hit 5,000 subs, would love to give him some more. I like this video, I haven't even watched it yet. We love Carlito, bro. So talented. And Carlito has made a new movie on the weird cast of Diddy Kong Racing. And I would love to know, because this game got some weird characters in it. I asked Carlito, I DM'd him, I'm like, hey man, I'm not trying to like take your shine. Are you cool with me watching this? He said, yeah. So we're watching this again. This is the weird cast of Diddy Kong Racing by Carlito, one of the most talented uh, YouTubers in the scene. I watched this already and this video was fantastic. I, I tweeted it a few days ago because I was like, all right, I want people to watch this on their own if they're going to. I'm not trying to like take views, but I'm going to watch it on Sunday and I have not spoiled myself. When you think of the racing game for the N64, the first thing to come to mind is probably Beetle Mario Adventure. Kart 64. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's a classic. People love this game. Honestly, I think a San Francisco Rush. As weird as that is. Amazing gameplay shit and an game. awesome cast. If you were to show your mom this roster, she could probably name almost everyone on this list. That's how recognizable this cast has become. Yeah, she could. Gamer mom? Yeah, I'm wondering, like, the average mom, I think, could get, like, I don't know if they'd know Peach. Right? Do they know Peach? My mom doesn't know who the fuck Yoshi is? Really? I feel like Yoshi might be one of the most universally known. Yoshi's definitely more known than Toad. You don't think so? I think they're, I think, I think Yoshi stocks are way higher than Toad. I think people miss Toad. Maybe now more. show your mom the <laughs> roster from Diddy Kong Racing. She probably only named Diddy Kong. My mom would not know who Diddy Kong is. <laughs> show your mom the roster what? from Diddy Kong Racing. What? She. Pr <laughs> My mom hell, I have no idea who this guy is. Huh? <laughs> My mom actually might know Conquer. She, I, I think she might know Conquer the Squirrel, and no one else. She know Banjo actually. Because I named my dog after this guy. She might know Banjo. Tag yourself. Who'd you guys play in this game? I said it before, bro. I'm a Timber player. I love Timber. Timber is like the Mario of the game. He's like the he's like all around, I think. I love Timber. And don't say tipped up. I, I hate tipped up, guys. Everybody in my friend group played tipped up. And I don't know why. He's a turtle. There's nothing appealing about this design. Every other character has, like, clothes or, like, a hat or goggles or <laughs> this look of visible confusion on what's going on with this guy. What's his problem? <laughs> what's wrong with Drumst? Oh, yeah, I forgot. He's sick. <laughs> yeah, WizPig did something to him. I don't know. I had a lot of people that like Tip Top, but I don't get it. Probably only named Diddy Kong. My mom would not. Even after that. playing this game yourself, you probably wonder who half of these characters are. Yeah. They literally only appear in this game. It's so weird. Wait, this is Bumper, right? I've always wanted to know, and maybe some of you guys know, Connery's Pants' his cat is named Bumper. Is it after this Bumper? Yeah? That's cute. That's, that's cute. That'd be cute if so. You think these dumbasses would leave? 
No, I don't know. Okay. Well, somebody ask him. At least appear in some donkey. No, it's because it almost got hit by a car. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and you know that's true because there's Bumper now. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, all right. Well, there you go. Donkey Kong spinoffs are like in any other game, but they don't. I'm sure, these guys do. <clears throat> that's less than half of this stupid ass roster. So. Who are these guys? Please tell me. Well, I know Crunch. I'll tell you. Let's go over Diddy Kong Racing's weird cast. Please do. I know Cre Crunch is a Kremlin. The turtle has no. his own game? No, he's in Banjo-Kazooie. He leads the choir. Which I think is a retcon. I'm pretty sure that motherfucker was in the first Banjo-Kazooie. He didn't have a name. And then, like, in Banjo-Tooie, they're like, Oh, Tip Top, my friend. I think they retconned that. It was just like a nondescript. Carlito will tell us, bro. Now, I said this Send is a it. roster full of dumbasses. And it is. <laughs> it is. But that doesn't mean I don't love these dumbasses. These like characters some. radiate so much personality. Just by hovering over them on the character select screen, you can oh, tell this. what they're Play all the about. Music. The instrument used in the song even changes to help reflect that character's personality. It's such a neat little addition. Like hovering over Pipsy. The theme changes into a cutesy kind of steel drum. I can't believe no other game has done this. Why isn't this common? <laughs> I love the confusion. A clock? <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess if you haven't seen this before, you'd be like, what? there are all these animals and then a clock. A clock guy. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of like forest friends and then like an appliance. Wait till you see the genie, bro. <laughs> or hovering over genie. banjo. You hear some dude go fucking crazy on his banjo. Yeah, this would kill your fingers. Can you play this? This applies to every character on this roster, and it's so cool. This game gets you to know how these characters act just by racing with them. That's all you do in this fucking game. They each have a few lines, and that's it. All you get beyond that is how they feel to play and the music change I mentioned earlier. Just that is enough to make you actually like these characters. It's super interesting. But I always- Tony, je definitely just a MIDI. Wait, are you saying that I- Did you think that I thought that someone played the banjo and then they bit crunched it down into that? No! <laughs> I don't think a person actually played that. No. This is the 64. There is no real music. You had to go to the PS1 for that. I wondered, what else is there to them? Like, is that all Bumper is? Just some badger who races Diddy Kong? Well, not necessarily. These characters are more than what they seem. Really? Let me show you what I mean. Please! The first character we're talking about is Diddy Kong. Yeah! He's someone we're all familiar with. No introductions needed. But why is Diddy Kong racing in this game? Well, he's racing to help out his old friend, Timber the Tiger, fight off the evil Whizpig. Yeah, Timber was Whizpig like his best friend. Because took over Timber's island. Oh, that's so his So in reality, island? Diddy Kong isn't actually special at all in this game. Oh, he's like a rich kid. I didn't know Timber was like a trust fund kid. Bro, has his own island? I want to meet Timber's parents, bro. He has the Holy same shit. role as everyone else. They're all just helping Timber. If anyone is the main character in this game, it's actually Timber. And yeah! if I'm just talking about this game on a surface Timber level rules, and not going dude. deeper... That would honestly be all I would have to say about Timber is from New England? Yeah, this is like a Cape Cod, like kind of <laughs> Martha's Vineyard Island. Oh, Diddy Kong. I am not joking when saying he's not special in this game. No, Diddy doesn't so, matter. So, where is Diddy Kong relevant? Well, he would have been the main character of the canceled sequel, Diddy Kong Racing Adventure. Don't be confused, though. If you know a lot about canceled rare games, you may be thinking of Donkey Kong Racing. And yes, that was a thing, but this oh is a completely God. separate canceled game. It's kind of wild. I There's a full-on playable game. prototype of this game. It's cool as fuck. Uh... There's not much to do in it. <laughs> but usually we don't even get to see prototypes like this in such... What the fuck is that rhino? Huh? What happened to Rambi? What is that? That's a dinosaur. What? Bro, what happened to Rambi? That was so cute. This is like a super cartoonish... He kind of looks like the Donkey Kong cartoon show, did he? On top of this Star Fox Assault beast. This is probably like an Unreal Engine, like a... Like a... 
Standard asset. Such high quality. Ugh. Regardless, I'm getting that a little off track. I'm not here to talk about Yeah, we need to take that shit down. Sedate it. All the details of this game. But I will give a synopsis of the plot to show Diddy Kong's role. While Diddy Kong is having fun on Timber Island, uh -huh. the Kremlings start kidnapping different Kongs. And while the Kremlings are doing this, Whizpig is turning Congo Island into a giant raceway. <laughs> and when Diddy Kong returns home, he sees the Kremlings bulldozing the forest. Why? Why would the wizard pig do that? Why would the wizard pig do that? Why does Wiz Pig love racing? Like, why couldn't he be like a racing pig, right? That's like a thing that people do at county fairs and shit. They race pigs. Why is he a wizard? <laughs> He's got like I don't know why he doesn't have like the 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 helmet. You know what I mean? He could he could be like a racer. I don't. And realizes the whole island is now a racetrack. Diddy Kong then calls all the other racers from the first game and a few other new racers to take back the island. That's pretty much the entire story of Diddy Kong Racing Adventure. There's not much to it, but there was also an earlier version of the story that got scrapped. It had a very similar plot, but the most noticeable change was that Whizpig would have been replaced by a white rhino named Baron Von Snort. And Baron Von Snort has okay. nothing to do with Diddy Kong, but that name is so fire I had to include it somewhere. This dude looks like Baron Von Snort. Why is the pig not named Snort? I guess Wiz Rhino isn't a good name. I do include it somewhere. But this dude making all this up. Bro, yeah, I need to see Carlito's source. Carlito could just be straight up lying, bro. I wouldn't know. I believe anything he tells me. Let's move on to the actual main character of Diddy Kong Racing. The goaded Timber the Tiger. Yeah! Like I said, Timber is the main I'm character Timber. of this game. Rawr. Diddy Kong ain't shit. Rare seemed to love this dude, sporting his own little Rareware cap so mirroring Diddy Kong's Nintendo hat. It's fire. Like I said before, he's the main character because he calls all the racers that appear in the game to Timber Island to help yeah, him. Yeah, Diddy's defeat. like, Diddy, I think if I remember correctly, Diddy is like mutuals with Timber. All these other guys are Timber's friends. So Diddy like doesn't know anybody else at the party. He just showed up to help Timber and Timber's like, oh, these are all my guys here. Check this out. Whiz pig. But That's a tiger, not a squirrel? What? Timber? Are you th He's orange. And stripey. What? Are you thinking of Conker? You're thinking of Conker. Like I seem to love this dude, sure. sporting his own little rareware cap, Mirker, because he He's calls all the racers that appear in the- Timber knows Banjo? I don't think so. Wait, no, he does know Banjo, because that's what you literally just- That's what I just said. <laughs> I guess he had to have. But Banjo doesn't. I guess they fell out or something. I can't believe Timbo wasn't. Timber wasn't in one of Banjo's many adventures. Kind of shocked by that. You think he'd be brought along? The game to Timber Island to help him defeat Whizpig. But he doesn't actually own the island. Oh. His parents actually own it. Yeah. His parents went on vacation away somewhere and left Timber <laughs> in charge of the island. Timber fucks up and Whizpig takes over the island. Timber's the cast of Diddy Kong Racing would then him? defeat the evil Whizpig and reclaim Shh. the ownership of the island back to Timber so he doesn't get in trouble with his parents. Mm. That is essentially the general plot of this game, but Timber was supposed to be a character way bigger than he ended up being. Oh. Someone who went beyond just Poor Diddy Timber, Kong dude. Racing. Let me explain. Before Diddy Kong Racing became <laughs> what we know it as, it was a completely different racing game known as Pro AM 64 that starred Timber the Tiger as the protagonist. Ew. When Rare showed Pro AM 64 to Nintendo, they ended up changing the lead character to Diddy Kong. <laughs> Bro, put put Diddy Kong in this shit. I hate that tiger. They gave if you gave Timber a Nintendo hat, they might have liked it. Game then becoming Diddy Kong Racing. That's so messed up. You could say Timber Tiger Racing. That's so sad. He's in the background too. He's getting shot at, dude. What is Wiz picked? Oh, he has a tree. I never noticed that. He's blazing trees. Shall we? <laughs> That's but so the Rare team up. had a fondness towards Timber, still making him the lead in the actual I story like of Diddy Kong Racing, and then planned into making him have his own full-on game after Diddy Kong Racing's release. It was going to be a 3D adventure game being developed for the N64 known as Dinosaur Planet. So Timber the Tiger would have been the protagonist no of this way. dinosaur planet. He would be a kind of time traveler who would go no to the prehistoric way. ages for an adventure. 
that would play similarly to the Legend of Zelda Ocarina <laughs> oh, of Time. Oh no! In Diddy Kong Racing itself, there are a bunch of prehistoric themes around Timber Island. Yeah. So it makes you wonder if they actually had this planned out for a while. Either way, after some time, they actually ended up scrapping Timber as the main character for this game. Yeah. And this game would Fox. eventually turn into yeah. Star Fox Adventures for the oh, GameCube. Oh my god, dude! You got showed up by Diddy Kong and then Fox? He th that's so sad, man. He got beat out twice? Dude, to lose your game to Star Fox in a side game. He's a pilot. He's not even supposed to be out of his plane, dude. This would officially kill off Timber from ever really having oh, his own game. Man. But his fate would officially be sealed when Rare made the Diddy Kong Racing remake for the DS later. Oh, there he is. And they removed there. the Rare logo from Timber's cap. <laughs> Replacing it with a Nintendo oh, DS logo no. instead. It's kind of like they officially disowned geek. Timber. It's kind of fucked up. Yeah. However, there are some characters that actually ended up in their own That's titles so after Diddy Kong Racing. Of course, being Banjo and Conker. Yeah. These characters actually first appeared in Diddy Kong Racing, believe it or not. This would be their debut game, before obviously appearing in their own games later. If you're watching this video, you probably know who they are but I'll go over them quickly one at a time real quick. Okay, so I think he's probably going to talk about the Conquer thing. I will say it was so weird because I lived during this time, and I remember seeing stuff for the Conquer game that they were working on, which is like this cutesy, like you collect tails and stuff. I was like, oh, that looks really cool, right? And, uh, like, he had like a Game Boy game, which was like also very cutesy and whatever, and then he's in this game... And he's adorable. And then they show footage and he's like cussing and talking about dicks and sex. And like there's a sunflower with giant breasts. And like, dude, what? <laughs> what happened? What's your problem, Conker? It was really weird. And then he just left again. He just was in no other games after that. <laughs> he just, he had his one game and then he dipped. It was really weird because he was still in this game looking cute as hell. There's not too much to say about Banjo. I mean, he's Banjo. We know Banjo. If you're watching this, you know who he is. He's so cute. After Diddy Kong Racing, he would star in his own banger game, being mm -hmm. Banjo Kazooie. Then there was Banjo Tooie, then the Game Boy yeah, one, then the good. Xbox which one, then he's good. gone for which 10 years, good. now he's in Smash. Banjo's dope as fuck. He's she Banjo on my Kazooie. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Somebody in chat on the last stream or the one before said, She Banjo on my Kazooie till I nut and bolt. And the first half is pretty bad, but that second half deserves recognition. That was really funny. Very iconic character. Really good. The characters in Banjo itself are fire. I mean, they had Klungo. But according to the Diddy Kong Racing manual, the reason why Kazooie isn't in this game is because Banjo hasn't actually met Kazooie yet. Aww! I like that they gave a reason for Kazooie not being here. It's definitely a thing I wouldn't care about if it didn't have a reason. But it having a kind it's of story reason is a pretty nice touch. Oh, he's looking for his special someone. Look at the the vacancy in his eyes. Look at how lost he looks. He needs a red bird. Enough banjo, though. We get it. We know who he is. Mm -hmm. It's time for the other one. Conquer. It's unbelievable that this squirrel is in this game, bro. <laughs> Professional pisser and part-time kart racer. But how the hell did he end up in this family-friendly Diddy Kong racing? I feel like, I, I feel kind of a kinship with Conker, because when I go work like those in Nintendo events, or like big, like, tournament stuff, for, you know, national broadcasts for like, you know, kids, I feel like I put on the Conker face. And then when I'm on stream, I'm talking about, uh, you know, what I talk about. It's weird. Well, like I, I feel said, kind of like a Conker Conker's bit, games weren't know? out yet. They were still in development. You piss everywhere? I piss all over this stream. This stream is just me peeing on flames. This is me. I'm just waving it around for three or four hours a night. When I'm when I'm in Diddy Kong Racing, aka the Nintendo tournaments or broadcasts, I gotta be you know professional. And when Diddy you Kong know? Racing came out, and at the point of Diddy Kong Minus Racing, minus 1K release, viewers, you already got it on you. You can't get it off now. It was actually planned for <laughs> Conquer to have a family friendly. You'll we'll never get it out. It was known as Twelve Tails Conquer sixty four. Pretty much your run of the mill N64 Yo, look at platformer. His head. He's got the, Super wholesome and shit. Conquer would actually have a release Stevie with Wonder. this wholesome type oh. of style on the Game Boy Color, <laughs> known as Conquer's Pocket Tail. Why is his head but doing the that? Console 12 Tails Conquer 64, <laughs> later in development, would turn into the crazy ass Conquer's Bad Tails Conquer that? 64. Was that later in development, would turn into the. 
I've never seen this. Is he? Is that Barry? Is that a girl or is he wearing like a like a like a Scottish kilt? Conquette? <laughs> oh, that's oh look at the rouge, wearing makeup. To the crazy ass conquers bad fur day, that's where he is anything Barry, yeah. but cutesy. It's an actual like real example of a cute <laughs> Mario type character going down the bad route in life, just becoming the morally worst person possible. Conquer is like the complete opposite of what kind of character you'd expect to be in Diddy Kong Racing. A character you would expect to be in this game is Pipsy, this cute little mouse racer. Yeah. Now, What's Pipsy actually kind of has a pretty cool history, mainly to do with how she even became Pipsy. Let me explain. At first, Pipsy wasn't even a mouse. She was a kangaroo named Roo. It was this yellow kangaroo That's with boxing cuter. clothes. I want Roo. There's even textures for her in the game still. However, so the problem cute. with Rue and why she wasn't included in the final release is because the team thought that characters would also need to be able to like walk around outside of their vehicles. So she was like scrapped. What? People have also thought that her boxing gloves might have been a problem since every other character has their hands free. I guess. But at the end of the day, Rue was left to die. Oh, dude. The character what? artist of Rare, Kevin Bailey, like was set to make a new design to replace Rue. Why can't the kangaroo run? Is the idea like you have to create a hop cycle? I don't care if I'm eight. If I'm a child, I'm not even gonna notice. So Kevin had an idea. There was this N64 game Rare was working on called Astro Mouse, and it got canceled, <laughs> shocker. What? But even after the game got canceled, Kevin Bayless wanted to repurpose Astro Mouse into Diddy Kong Racing as a playable what? racer. Why? So he decided to replace Rue with Astro Mouse. But then... I, you know what? I An astronaut mouse is kind of cool. Although it would be weird that somebody's here, like... <laughs> everybody else is just hanging out, like, on vacation, and one guy's in his, like, job uniform. <laughs> The astronaut shows up to, to, to also race. Oh, sorry, guys. You know, I'm so busy being in space. And I couldn't change. Hope you guys don't mind. I'm an astronaut, by the way. That got scrapped. Kind of an asshole. Because of problems with his spacesuit being too bulky to, like, fit in the vehicles for the game. <laughs> so Kevin Bayless worked on redesigning Astro Make the Mouse. Cart bigger! Which eventually turned into Pipsy. Aww. The tough, speedy mouse we know her as today. Adorable. After she became Pipsy, though, there's honestly nothing of note about her. She's an iconic Diddy Kong Racing character. And that's pretty much it. Is she the only girl? She is. Huh. That's the girl character. That's the one that your sister picks. When you pick her, she goes, Hi, Pipsy! Uh-oh! <laughs> her voice is very clearly the highest by a mile. Next on this list, we got Crunch the Kremlin. Yo! He's a pretty cool dude. I like him a lot. <laughs> Not much to him, to be honest. But that's what makes me like him. He's kind of the only character I'd say really relates to Diddy Kong. And what I mean by that is like, you know, he's a Kremlin. And yeah, that's a from, Donkey like, Kong universe, series yeah. species. Why are they so it makes sense a Kremlin would join a Diddy Kong racing game roster. Why does this specific Kremlin show up to race, though? Well, he has a little bit of a story reason to show up. Crunch was one of the two Kremlin spies that was sent by King K. Rool <laughs> to investigate why Diddy Kong is at Timber Island. They were sent because K. Rool was scared that they were making some plot against the Kremlings. Oh, Diddy Kong Racing kind of reasonable. actually shows us what the other spy K. Rool was sent looks like. And he looks exactly the fucking same. <laughs> it's just Crunch 2. So the Kremlin spies are spying right. as they do. Then they see Diddy Kong speed off in a car in the jungle. Oh. So Crunch tells Crunch 2 that they should go chase him. Crunch 2 declined and then bolted into the undergrowth. So Crunch says fuck it and decides to go follow Diddy alone. But instead of being a villain like he was supposed to be, he teams up with Diddy Kong <laughs> and crew to beat Wizpig. Cool! There's no given reason why he does this. Crunch doesn't need a reason because he's Crunch. No what? given re What? This is so weird. I don't like this. Like everybody else is like. Not really anthropomorphic. Like, it's just an animal with one, maybe two pieces of clothes at least, at, at most. Hat, shirt. Beret, shirt. Uh, hat, belt, gloves, kind of. Th that's a person, man. That's a person. That's not an animal. This is a human. Reason why he does this. Why <laughs> Crunch doesn't need a reason. So stupid. Because he's Crunch. Why did they do when that? When Crunch first offers them help, they're very skeptical. Like, they don't trust Crunch. Which, I mean, I would trust Crunch over Conquer, personally, but that's <laughs> just me, I guess. 
They would eventually learn to I trust. Mean, you don't know about Conker's home life at this point. You don't know what Conker's up to. Crunch though, and become friends with him Aww. when they all defeat Whizpig together. There's a little known fact about Crunch though. In development, his name used to be Crash instead of Crunch. Oh. This can even be seen on a German N64 promo VHS tape. Cool. The reason it's even in this VHS tape was because for this tape they were using beta footage of Diddy Kong Racing to promote it. Damn, version 1964. That's an old game. The reason why his name changed to Crunch is not necessarily known, but it's most likely because there was already a type of Kremlin named Crash. But even earlier in development, when the game was still known as Pro AM 64, Crunch wasn't even a Kremlin. He was just a crocodile. <laughs> Since Diddy Kong became the main character after the switch from Pro AM to Diddy Kong Racing, he was slightly altered to become okay. the fire ass Kremlin we know him as today. Cool. Why were there two of them though? Like, why did he have to ten send two spies? I don't know why they needed two crunches. They could have just had one crunch. Now, Bumper. Ew. Bumper the Badger is probably my favorite original character in this game. I don't game. like him. He's weird. I love him for good reason. I don't like his voice. He's a cool either. ass car racing badger. He's dope as fuck. No. Of course, like many other characters in this game, he looked different originally, sporting this I'm not blue a look. Guy. It's like the blue colored fur see? makes it's a jumpsuit daylight. almost. It's an interesting idea for sure. There's also this other design of Bumper that was Tony made. doesn't get spy work. Do you need verifiable, authentic espionage protocol in a racing game in 1996? I, I don't think you need that. Like, are kids watching Goldeneye and they're like, ah, I see Trevelyan and Bond. Okay. You have to send along two of them. No, you don't have to do that. Do you think K. Rule has the same protocol as Her Majesty's Secret Service? You think K. Rule has the exact same thing that he's doing as England? Made early on. Kind of looks like he's a mechanic I or something. I think K. Rule's supposed to be stupid. Oh, I thought he's wearing a Mario hat. I'm like, bro, this dude is such a fanboy. <laughs> bro, thank you, Mario. I can't. Here. But he's wearing a little cap that says 64 on it. Pretty cute. And that's cool and all. But I'm going to be honest. That's not the main reason why I love Bumper. Oh, I, I forgot there was a Mario trailer today. Is it worth watching? I haven't seen it yet. I love him because he got arrested. And that is like so fucking absurd. And no, this isn't some joke or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Bumper officially was behind bars at one point. In this 2012 Rare blog website, <laughs> a Q&A okay. was held where fans could ask questions. A fan of Rare named Aaron asked, Where do your beloved characters like Cameo and Banjo go when not used in any games for the next decade? Uh -huh. Rare themselves yeah, answered where's this. Timber? They said, Where do the characters go between games? Well, they're all having crazy adventures <laughs> too expensive and asset heavy to adapt into game form. Except for Bumper the Badger, who's in jail. For what? What did he do? Why? Of all characters? Not even Conker? Conker's out there on the streets? So apparently Bumper did some heinous shit and ended up behind bars. But they prefer not to but talk But it's okay, about it. because nine years later in 2021, Rare tweeted that Bumper's been free for oh, a while, good. and he's okay. sorry for all the bad things he did. Well, he's superficially sorry. Okay, so he's he's unrepentant. I don't know if that's better or worse. He, do, he has no remorse. So he's just evil. Yeah, I guess so. I don't... Timber would never do that. When I read that, I could not believe that Rare officially said that <laughs> shit. This was By the way, I don't... I, it's probably not in this video. So Diddy Kong Racing, I think, was one of the last games that of the old Coney era of, like, you know, uh, playing games. <laughs> I played this game all the way through. This dinosaur's voice is so fucking funny. This dinosaur's voice is hilarious. Also, that octopus is a son of a bitch. I hated that octopus so much. The walrus. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, I forgot about these. This guy. Oh, my God. Bluey. <laughs> Ew. Ew, dude. Ew. I hate the bosses in this game so much. This this dinosaur, I think his voice is like 
He's like, wow, good job, Bumper. You defeated me. Now you got to get after Whizpig. And his head's like doing this. It was like Tiny Kong levels it's of so absurdity funny. to me. But that's all we know about Bumper. He was just some chill badger racing with Diddy Kong. I'm not a prison. Bumper guy. Next I racer, like Bumper. Tip Top. Tip Top is a turtle that is... Ew! What is that? <laughs> oh my god. Ew! Why do his eyes scale with his head? What? Vile beast? Yeah, I hate this dude. Why are you wearing gloves? I don't. I hate Tip Top, dude. I really hate Tip Crocodile dentist ass mouth. I hate Tip Top. I will never enjoy Tip Top. There is so much Tip Top propaganda, bro. He's clumsy and shy. And actually doesn't even like Geek. racing. He's pretty much racing out of peer pressure. Which is kind of fucked up from Diddy Kong and friends. He's just here to be with them, but you know, making them do shit he doesn't want to do. I also mentioned earlier that he appeared in a game after Diddy Kong Racing. It wasn't his own game, but yeah, he did. More teeth? Oh my god. Turtles do have teeth, right? Just not like that. He was a minor character in the Banjo-Kazooie series. Yeah, he did When playing Banjo-Kazooie, if you go inside of Tank Tup's shell, yeah. you can see Tip Tup and his own choir. You play a little mini game that's pretty much just Simon Says with turtles, and then he gives Banjo a jiggy. He then reappears in Banjo Tooie where he has an egg. Tip Top tells Kazooie that the egg hasn't hatched in several months. <laughs> Tip Top already has 19 daughters, and because of that, he believes that this egg houses his future son. So he asks <laughs> Kazooie for help, and Kazooie agrees okay. and helps hatch the egg, which then hatches his first son, Tip Top Jr. Aww. Tip Top would also later appear in Banjo Pilot, but you know, like whatever, it's not that big of a deal. Nah, it but matter. Tip Top, the thing is. His origins are kind of a mystery. I've seen conflicting thoughts. But you know, I never really put it together that this turtle had, or this turtle had other turtles living in him. I never really thought about that. Like there are other turtles in the turtle, right? But they're only in the arms and the legs. They're squatting. <laughs> You think that turtle doesn't know that uh, they're in there? <coughs> it's a very common trope. What? Turtles in turtles? Hold on. Tank Tup okay. shell. Simon says we where he has an egg. Oh, by the way, Ella Fox is spinning. Banjo Tooie is the worst game ever made. I I I still don't understand, and and I don't think this is like something that people would be like, oh my god, it's such a contrarian. Banjo Tooie is so bad. I hate it, dude. I really do. Cause I every once in a while I'll go back and I'm like, oh, I want to play a banjo game. But I've played Banjo Kazooie like eight times. I play it a lot. And it's like, all right, well, you know, I 100% it like six months ago. And I was like, all right, let me try Banjo Tooie. It's so long, dude. If you walked twice as fast, that game might be doable. Banjo Tooie is amazing. It's better than the first. I don't know where you even get that idea. I don't even know. Like, a lot of opinions, I can, like, fathom the human being that could think of that, right? But Banjo Tooie is just, it's literally worse. It's so slow. Getting a jiggy takes, like, 45 minutes each. It's a disaster. Do the games have the same gameplay like Mario Galaxy 1 and 2? Yeah, kind of. Like, the gameplay of Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie is, like, the same. There's more stuff you can do with Tooie. The problem is that Banjo-Tooie is, like... In Banjo-Kazooie, it's like, all right, uh, smash this box. Inside the box is a, a jiggy. Get the jiggy. Da -da 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 -da. Tooie is like, smash the box. Inside the box is one of five uh, colored eggs. You have to get all five colored eggs and then take them to this giant eagle. The eagle will then hatch one of the eggs and out of it comes a, a spring. And you use that spring to jump up to the top of a tree. And at the top of the tree is 
a, a, a pickaxe, which will open the second egg. And then you have to go back to the eagle, open up the second egg, and inside there, it, like, it's insane. It's crazy. It's exhausting. Tip Top tells Kazooie That's this. so cool. Mods, get this fucking guy out of here. So sick of this. Fucking hate Banjo-Tooie. So stupid. You're exaggerating. I'm literally not. I'm, I'm literally not. Do you remember the quest with, like, the babies and the dinosaur level? Uh, you guys are pissed. I'm literally not exaggerating. That game is a fucking nightmare. I hate Banjo-Tooie. The egg hasn't hatched in several months. Tip Top already has 19 daughters. That game so and because much. of that, he believes that this egg houses his future son. So he asks Kazooie for help. And Kazooie Back agrees to Carlito. and helps hatch the egg, which then hatches his first son, Tip Top Jr. Tip Top would also later appear in Banjo Pilot, but you know, like, whatever, it's not that big of a deal. But Tip Top. The thing is, his origins are kind of a mystery. <laughs> I've seen conflicting thoughts like that. between if he was created for the Banjo Kazooie <clears throat> prototype Project Dream or if he was created strictly for Diddy Kong Racing as an original character. What's weird about it is that Kevin Bayless said himself that Tip Top was made for Diddy Kong Racing. Um, oh. and, well, speaking of, uh, I guess, green what is this? Oh, hell no, nah, bro, on Timber Island. What is he? Is he? Can I choose him? Get out of the way. I'm trying to pick Bumper. <laughs> I can't even see ba Banjo, I can't see you. Can you please tilt your head down? I literally can't make eye contact with Banjo. What is... Characters. Uh, Tip Top <laughs> also appeared here and then later reappeared in Banjo-Kazooie. Do you remember if he... <laughs> Dude, that Conqueror is terrifying. His hands are just like this. Oh my god. Did he start in DDK Racing before also appearing yeah, in Banjo? Yeah, he, he, he started in, in DKR. So that makes me even more confused why people say Tip Top was made for Project Dream. Like, I don't know if they pulled that information out of their ass or something. Or if there's like some truth to it, like from a dev. But I don't think Kevin Bayless would lie about something stupid like Tip Top being silly. created for Diddy Kong Racing. Might have misspoke or something. So I don't really know where the fuck the Project Dream Tip Top thing came from. But I think it's probably false. If you know where it originated from, let me know. I genuinely want to know. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm fucking wrong. Hey, Grant Carcope, if you're in this chat right now, because he stops by stream all the time, go ahead and let Carlito know. All right. Regardless, Kevin Bayless had said some other information about Tip Top that is pretty interesting. Apparently, when designing Tip Top himself, he resembled. What? Tip Top is now my sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> Look at him. Imagine this, but 12 feet tall. More of a dinosaur. There's your Poppy Playtime game. You could make a game. Of this guy on Steam for free and and be on you could sell the merchandise at Target or instead of a turtle, fitting in with the whole prehistoric route the team I was going. Him. With. How? This He's early tip top design was also described as looking pretty similar to like Yoshi from Mario, and that concludes everything about my a man bit, tip top. Finally, we're done with the base roster. There's now the two unlockable characters, Drumstick and TT. First off, Drumstick the Rooster. Okay. Now, I said this before we started the video, but I kind of want... I think I actually know Drumstick's story. And I could be wrong, but I think I remember looking it up, and, and it, was, it was shocking. I think Drumstick used to be, like, the best racer on the island, and everybody loved him, and he was so cool. And then Wizpig put a spell on him, and now he's mentally ill? Like... If I remember correctly, he, like, used to be really smart and cool and good at racing, and then Wizpig, like, fucked him up in the head, like, gave him a concussion, and now he's, like, oh, like, now he can't talk? Now, I'm telling you this because I, I could be very wrong, and maybe I read some drumstick fanfic, because I read this back when the game came out, in the wild west of the internet. So maybe I stumbled upon the wrong the wrong forum. I don't know. What are you talking about? I I I this is uh, this isn't a bit or a joke. This is literally what I know of the character based on my knowledge when I was like I, when did this game come out? 2000 Oh my god. 1996, 1997. I was like 8 or 9. I was on GameFAQs. I think he had CTE. <laughs> And he's fucked up in the head. And you're trying to help him. Now, I don't know if this is true or not. But you're 43? 
a little. Am I? Did I? Is my math wrong or is your math wrong? Whatever. Drumstick is a character that has pretty important relevance. All right, let's to see the, who's right. Let's see who's right. Hold on. The overarching and deep emotional plot of Diddy Kong Racing. Yeah. When Wizpig took over the island, Timber had an immediate plan before calling everyone to help. It was to just call Drumstick for help. Yeah. Drumstick was known as the best racer on Timber Island. Yeah, he's a very true good. professional. Yeah. So Timber told Drumstick to challenge Wizpig yeah. to fight for the island. Yeah. Drumstick agreed. The deal was if Drumstick beats Wizpig in a race, Wizpig would have to leave the island. They raced, and nobody knew who won. But a lot of time passed, and Drumstick never returned. So Timber sent out his letter to call everyone to help for the fight against Wizpig. Oh, he disappeared. <laughs> I forgot about that. He just disappears. But I'm going to let it rock. Hold on. Now, you may be wondering, what happened to Drumstick? Yeah. Well, after he raced with Wizpig, he apparently turned into a frog. And I shit you not, to break this curse and revert Drumstick back into a rooster, you have to run over him with your car. Which is the most, like, playground rumor-ass unlockable character <laughs> I've ever heard. That's what? like in Melee when you microwave your game and unlock Fire Mario. But who would think to unlock a character you'd have to like run over a frog? Huh? At least the frog has like the red shit on his head so you know it's not like just the normal frog. But honestly, that's pretty cool. I like unlockable stuff that's, that's not just thing. the X amount of races, you know what I mean? Uh, they made a whole ass other bit of the story to unlock this rooster character. Yeah. That's cool as fuck. I wish more games did that. Yeah. But... I also found out that it's a little bit different to unlock him in Diddy Kong Racing DS. Is that it? You have to like pull on a random frog like it's a fucking slingshot <laughs> and let it fly into the air to hit the drumstick frog off a ledge so then you can run over him. Oh, cool. Finding footage for that legend. <laughs> great video game videos. 17 subs. Can't be that great, I guess. Me to this awesome video by great video game videos. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. I need this, like, transparent so I can pop it up on my stream. I need this on my stream deck. Got him! <laughs> Thank you, shit. Pretty cool shit. That's, so that's all good. there is to Drumstick. No, like, special development history that that's I could it, find. That's it, huh? Just an interesting unlockable character. You know what I think it was? Hold on. Maybe I filled in the gaps myself. Because when I picked Drumstick, like, I want you guys to imagine... Listen, I want you to imagine what you think Drumstick sounds like. Don't go look it up, please. I'm going to bring it up. Imagine in your mind's eye what you think his voice sounds like. Redneck, Elvis, a racist. Foghorn, Leghorn. <laughs> Those are all three the same thing. Uh, Yippee, Cowboy, a, a Pienta. Okay, Joe Swanson. That's not bad. All right. So you all have an idea of what this guy sounds like. Hold on. Here you go. I'm Diddy. Uh -huh. Whoa! My it's Crunch. Uh. I'm Coco. We're going all the way around. Hey, it's Tick Tock. Uh -huh. uh. I'm T T T T. Whoa! Why does T T have that like reverb sound? He's like God. Yo, there's my fucking goat! There is my fucking goat. Get me, let me get out of the way for the king. The king of Timber Island. That's my guy right there. Timber! I'm Banjo. He doesn't even look like a bear, does he? He looks like a camel to me. Am I wrong? He doesn't even look like a bear. You didn't guess that. I know you didn't guess that. My name's Drumstick! <laughs> I know you didn't guess that.
he's fucking crazy. Wizpig did something to him. <laughs> he blinks one eye at a time. Like he went, he he's fucking crazy. I think I might have filled in the gaps myself a little bit. Maybe I <laughs> I created my own drumstick fan fiction. I don't know. But I think turning him into a frog and then back to a chicken uh, fucked him up a little bit on some, like, I don't know, pet cemetery stuff, you know? Something's not quite right with Drumstick. My name's Drumstick! Oh, my God. My name's Drumstick! <laughs> look at him! He doesn't look normal! He also got ran over by a car. Oh, yeah! I did do that. Oh, Maybe I gave him a traumatic brain injury. Whoops. By the way, ads in 10 seconds. I can't snooze anymore. I've been doing it. If you want to see the stream, drop a prime or a tier one. Sorry. I can't. You got to run them. I'll see you guys in three minutes. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I think he's got he something happened to him. Thank you. I'm a pro. It's like naming a cow steak. I think it's more like naming a cow. It's not steak. It's like a piece of the steak. Uh, it's like it, it's like porter, porterhouse, porter, porterhouse is too much. Porter, <laughs> ribeye, ribeye, ribeye. Yeah, that's a good one. T-bone, that's pretty good. I was about to say New York strip. <laughs> that doesn't really ro ro roll off the tongue. You know. Thank you. Oh, it's cozy. Now the final playable character. It's God! PT. He's a talking clock that just walks around at first. <laughs> you can talk to him and activate yeah, he time just trial Yeah, he walks mode, around. Which is what you'd think TT stands for, time trial. But Kevin Bayless actually remembers the dev team calling him TikTok. So TT's full oh. government name is TikTok. And I didn't fucking know that until now. Cool. You can race TikTok if you have all the pieces of the TT amulet. And once you beat him in every race with every vehicle and time trials, you can unlock TT as a playable racer, who is by far the best character in this game. He just yeah. has, like, by far the best stats. He's crazy. So if you want a perfect race in this game, you need to use TT. This yeah, next he's just bit way better than TT everybody. isn't even necessarily from Diddy Kong Racing, but people believe it to be a reference to TT. In Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, there's this dude named Trophy Thomas, who also <laughs> abbreviates his name as TT. That would be a small thing to compare at first, yeah. but then you realize he also gives the player TT trophies. And you get these TT trophies what? for getting the fastest time possible during different challenges Trophy he gives Thomas. you. So both of these TTs give golden rewards uh -huh. for doing stuff quickly. And I think what seals their connection is that yeah. they both literally abbreviate their name as TT. I guess so. But we've seen the real TT pretty recently, Trophy even Andy. after Nuts and Bolts. <laughs> the most recent time we've seen TT himself isn't this prototype screenshot of Sea of Thieves, another recently rare made title. What? It's TT in this crude looking bar with the caption, it's been 20 years since Rare released Diddy Kong Racing. TT reckons it's time for a drink to celebrate. What? This was tweeted by Greg Mayles. Who? And Greg Mayles never worked on Diddy Kong Racing, but he's made some games that you've definitely recognized. Here's the list on screen. Oh, TikTok okay. TikTok the clock. Wait, some game he's the director of Banjo-Kazooie? He made Battletoads. What? Was that you've definitely Bro, did he really I can't believe the same person made Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie. That's unbelievable to me. What happened in these two years? He lost his fucking mind. Nineteen ninety nine must have been a terrible year for him. Definitely recognized Here's Ambition. <laughs> he wanted too much. Donkey Kong 64 happened. See, I was going to make that joke that it corrupted his mind, but he was only did support. But maybe that's just how strong the influence was. Coins for every Kong. Individually colored bananas. <laughs> it's on screen. <laughs> TikTok the clock obviously wouldn't make it into the final Sea of Thieves. It was just a little joke. But it's cool to see stuff like this in general. That, Seeing I that Rare that. really does think about the How'd you feel about ukulele? Uh, fine, but soulless. I beat ukulele and I 100% it, but it's one of those games that I 100% because I I have a compulsion to do it, not because it's good. I I just I couldn't help myself. I just had to do it. Did you play ukulele too? Was that the Donkey Kong Country one? Yeah, again, it's good, but like, ukulele just doesn't have the the sauce. 
And I think it's just because new thing bad, as sad as it is. I think it's just like you can't have the childlike wonder again of a talking animal. <laughs> as stupid as it is. When I play it, I'm just like, oh, the fucking donkey cock. <laughs> I, I, I'm so I'm so cynical now. You really got to come with some heat to like, you know. But I'm sure a kid probably played the second ukulele and really likes it. And that's who it's made for, you know. These Good characters time. a lot. Or at least enough to make little jokes like this in the first place. That's every playable character in Diddy Kong Racing. Tell me about Taj! But to be really conclusive yes! about the weird cast Taj! of Diddy Kong Racing. Let's go! I have to mention some of the other important characters yes! that appear in this. Hell yes! He even talks about the not roster that's my guy, dude! Yes! I fucking love Carlito! He's so thorough! I love Taj! This game. Any I'll try Tajers? To make it quick. Taj the Blue Elephant. He serves as the tutorial guide to a degree, and is a very prominent character, very. even later becoming playable in Diddy Kong Racing DS. Taj is actually an ancient genie, and was evicted from his Look mountain his home, eyes. as well as being cut off from his lamp because of Wizpig's tyranny. He acts as the tutorial guy and trains you to Does beat the evil Does he want to go back in the lamp? Now, that's it in terms of the actual game for Taj, but it was revealed by Kevin Bayless that before becoming a blue elephant, he was going to be a hairy mammoth. Yeah. But it didn't look right with the N64 limitations. No. How do you put so hair on it? was changed to the design we know today. Good. How would you put hair on it? It's Nintendo 64. They were ambitious. Bro, put hair on that dude. <laughs> what? Wait, is this the god wait, the got him with transparency? Hold on. <laughs> no way you made it that fast. <laughs> oh my god. How did you do that? How did you do that, Simon? How did you do hold on, I'm downloading it now. How did you make this so fast? <laughs> got him. I guess you just, you didn't actually make the, uh, it, you didn't actually get it from the video. You just made it yourself. I think that's what happened. That shit, a virus, but it's worth it. <laughs> Got him. I'll add it after this. And even though he isn't playable in the N64 version of Diddy Kong Racing, there's evidence to suggest that he was planned to be playable. Really? In the beta files of Diddy Kong Racing, there's a character oh. select instrument change that goes unused, and it sounds like it could have belonged to Taj. Like I mentioned before, this instrument change only happens when you hover over a character to select them. So Taj was probably going to be playable, and this was the theme they would have used when you hovered over him. Now, Wizpig. I could not make this video Ooh. without talking about Wizpig. I've tossed around his name so many times throughout this video. Bro, Wizpig is like 50 feet tall. Why? <laughs> is really weird. So it would be disrespectful to not talk about the intergalactic <laughs> space pig. Boo. Known as the big bad bully, Wizpig is a fucking maniac. His backstory shows what I mean. One day, Wizpig was living his life, as you do, doing his thing. But he was really bored. Like as a pig? So he decides to conquer his entire home planet, oh. and he succeeds doing so, uh -huh. turning it into a futuristic theme park named Future Funland. Why does that? Why was that a thing in the '90s? That was like like Space Jam. This other examples that the editor will put in the video. <laughs> I'm sure there's a couple. What what's up with the evil theme park thing? It was all over the place. I don't know why. It's just a fun stage theme. Yeah, but like the I mean the villain owning their own theme park was like a pretty common thing. But I don't know why. Goosebumps, I guess. Yeah, actually. Yeah, just evil theme parks in general. Car and Evil was a game, you know. So once he was the king of his entire thing? world, like a... he became bored again and decides to conquer other entire planets. Oh. When conquering other planets, Is he Diddy found Kong out about Earth? the sport of racing, which then became Is one Timber of his favorite Earth? things to do. So he would race people and cause chaos all throughout the galaxy, which eventually leads him to take over Timber Island and cast a spell on the four guardians of Timber Island, Smoky. as well as turning Drumstick into a frog. Once Wizpig is defeated in the game, the gang is all having a party, you know, because they're celebrating they beat uh -huh. Wizpig. But then Wizpig is kind of a dickhead here. He like <laughs> scares them all off and then shoots lasers at them before so dipping back bigger? home to Future Funland. 
Timber and friends respond by going to his actual home planet and then beating his ass in races at his own doorstep. What is this problem? So Wispig understands that he's a fucking loser. And after Wispig loses, he like dies, I, th I think. His ship would show up in the post credits, but we never see him, so he's probably dead. Wispig yeah. was not weak though. He even had the balls to challenge Mario of all people to a fight. It was what? in the one-shot manga, Mario no Boken Land, Go Go Diddy. It's a nine-page Diddy Kong Racing manga Ooh, that what? like exists. It has a really cute art style. Yeah, I like that. And it's that. not that's even cute. the only Diddy Kong Racing manga that like exists. There's another one too that's very slapstick. <laughs> he has a little balloon. Look how happy he is. Somebody just give him balloons. Look at how he's <laughs> Tim, look at Tim. Timber's wicked. Look at that dude. He got on the goggles. I love young Tim's. I guess that's crunch. And more than just nine pages. It seems to have a pretty decent Jeez. length. I would love to make a video on this shit, but I couldn't find any translations of the lengthy one, so yeah. that kind of sucks. Yeah, that that's does. super off topic, though, and way much to get into. Back to Wizpig. Obviously, he's in Diddy Kong Racing DS, mm -hmm. where you actually unlock him, which is kind of cool. Oh, but his render wait, is probably the most him? disgusting thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I genuinely thought this was like some fan-made curse shit, but this is real. What? Ew! He's like slimy. This is a real official image of Wizpig. Oh my and god. That would be the final time we would see Wizpig. Oh. Same with most of this cast, besides the mentions in like the Twitter posts or whatever. Uh -huh. yeah. These characters are officially dead. It sucks. <laughs> I don't know we'll if they're probably dead. never. Diddy's not dead, dude. <laughs> he put Diddy. Ban Banjo is dead, actually. So is Conker. But Diddy's alive. Or see these guys ever again. And that's sad. It is sad. These characters with their one major appearance made one hell of an impact that I personally won't ever forget. Yeah, I agree. Diddy Kong Racing is a fun-ass game it is. filled with so much personality. If you didn't know about Diddy Kong's friends before this video, you for sure know them now. These weird fucks are something. Something special. And I hope one day we can see them back on the racetrack that they deserve to be on. I feel like this video that he's using right here in Grayscale is literally the video I just put on to find out Drumstick's voice. <laughs> it's the same video. That's amazing. Content circle of life. Excellent movie. Excellent movie. <coughs> Drake's for Carlito. We love Carlito here, bro. Carlito with another banger. Just hit 5K subs, 10K views on this video two days ago. Now listen, a lot of people, what they do is they tell you, hey, go to this video and leave a like. I'm not going to tell you to do that because actually that hurts them because what happens is YouTube sees you going there, dropping a like and a comment, and then leaving, so their view duration goes down. What I want you to do is watch this movie later, all right? This is everything about Klungo. If you're a Banjo-Kazooie fan, I want you to watch that. I have not watched it. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it on stream. I'm gonna leave that to you guys. And if you guys wanna see it, then you watch it fully. Alright? I'm gonna leave that to you. I already watched it. Alright, we'll watch it again. <laughs> we try to help out people on this stream. Excellent movie. Honestly, dude, I can't believe poor Timber, right? This is so sad. Like, I, <laughs> a Timber was my favorite design-wise, and I'm not even, like, a tiger guy. He just looks so cool. Maybe it's the hat. Maybe it's literally just wearing hats. Never the guy. It's tough. It's so sad to me when studios get games, and they're like, hey, you need to swap out the main character because nobody cares about this, so they gotta put Diddy Kong in it. Or, like, a Star Fox game. Right? Like, apparently they were working on Nuts and Bolts, and they were like, bro, this sucks. Put Banjo in that shit so people buy it. <laughs> TT is such a sick design. No, it's a clock. That shit looked like Cogsworth. It's just a, co a, a clock. It's a clock with hands. Coney, read the first comment. Small fun bonus fact. According to Rare, the Diddy Kong Racing Tipper grew a beard and became a rapper. 
Much like the bumper thing, it's kind of funny that out of the entire DKR cast, as far as we know, Banjo had the best fate. <laughs> what? A rapper? What does he rap about? He's rich. Huh? Clock with hands are cool. Uh, no, dude, all these dudes are animals and, like, they're so cute. And then there's a fucking clock with Mickey Mouse hands. Stupid. What's wrong about becoming a rapper? How is that worse than Banjo? Name two Timber songs. Name two tracks with Timber. I thought so. Name one good Banjo game. Banjo-Kazooie. Okay, case closed. Real quiet now. Got. Got him. I'm trying to get it to open. <laughs> I don't want to. The, hold on. Uh, <laughs> got him. I have to pause this because I'm scared that if I leave it playing, the extremely loud buzzer will come on next. <laughs> Maybe they're in the same folder and it'll autoplay. I don't know. <laughs> Terrifying. I don't want it. I don't want that to hit again. I'm scared. Do the buzzer? No. You guys haven't been bad enough for that. And don't be bad enough, okay? <laughs> I know some of you guys no! are going to try to get me to do it. I'm not going to. It's going to take a lot, all right? Only if I get really mad. I made a got him emote. <laughs> this does seem funny. It pops up on the stream and then the chat is just. Dude, you're being assailed on all fronts. There's no recourse. You can't get out. It just, everybody. <laughs> you can't even read it. You barely read it. Got him. That's pretty good. I like that. All right. We watched a movie about Diddy Kong, which is all well and good. But there's another character. There's another dude. That I need to know the backstory about. There's another guy that just, I don't get what his whole deal is, dude. I don't know what's going on with him. You ever wonder, why does Wario hate Mario so much? What is this dude's problem? Why Wario got an attitude? What's his deal? What's his problem, huh? I be thinking that. What is this fucking guy's problem? Let's find out the story of why Wario hates Mario. What's his deal, man? Wario's just a hater, and I love him for that. No, think about this. If you found a person that was just like you, but, like, better, <laughs> you'd probably hate them, too. Imagine finding yourself. Don't do this. I said imagine a person just like you, and you did this. I don't like that. I know you're going with that. I don't like that. Oh, I'd fucking hate that guy. I'd be furious. That's what I'm talking about. You find a guy that's you but better. And everybody loves him. Although I guess Wario's rich in the first game, right? I don't know. Let's find out. This is why Wario hates Mario. Ooh, why is he seething? I remember as a kid stepping into this room in Super Mario Land 2 and looking at this obnoxious nightmare fuel. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look at him. Oh, Jesus. He's so much bigger. He's huge. I love that bit laugh. Hold on. It's obnoxious nightmare fuel. Oh, that's good. I like that too. A blood curdling 8 bit laugh, coupled with this great value version of Mario hopping off this throne and charging at you. Grade A Nintendo weirdness. Aww. This is the very first appearance of Wario, an enigma within the Mario franchise that has gone from this hot mess to a well-established and, dare I say, charming character. You know what's weird? I have a friend who uh, is really afraid of, like, the doppelganger archetype. I don't know why, but, like, he's really afraid of that. And now that I think about it, I feel like this would freak people out. Like, you're just seeing another Mario, but, like, he's, like, if you're if you're susceptible to this, I can see why that could be scary. I mean, frankly, I can't. We saw Nope together. He was, like, yeah, that was fine because he won't watch us. <laughs> he won't, he watched Get Out and he watched Nope, but he won't watch us because he's scared of the whole doppelganger thing. I'm, like, what? Bro, if it's me, I'll just kill him. I'm dumb as shit. <laughs> 
My clone's gonna be dumb as shit too. I'll just kill his ass. Oh yeah. But how did he come to meet Mario and That's eventually what I get know. two series that stood on their own feet? Let's dig a little deeper into the origins of Wario and find out. I am the Mentok. What's his and problem, welcome everyone dude? To Origin Oracle. Kick back, grab some snacks, and let's head back in time. A really tall Tony? Wait, what is- You think my Wario would be really tall? <laughs> That's the thing that differentiates us? My. Like 6'8"? Stupid. Wario's debut no. game was none other than Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins, released in 1992 for the Game Boy. This time, <laughs> the game so takes stupid. place on Mario's own private island, known simply as Mario Land, complete Damn, with his own his castle own and a massive mechanical version of himself. Why he I guess saving pet? the Mushroom Kingdom a couple of times made Mario a very rich Why man did he make and possibly a, robot? a narcissist. Please bring me pizza and uh, make sure that these boxes are not recycled. The story be what kind of accent is that? I've always wondered that. Boxes. Box, is that what accent does he have? Romanian? I've never heard that before. Again, shortly after the Box. events of Super Mario Land, as Mario returns from saving Princess Daisy from the evil alien. It's transatlantic? What? Isn't transatlantic what they use in the old movies? In the old pictures? This is what they do. You gotta talk like this. I think that's transatlantic accent, right? The tango in the Empire of Sarasaland. <laughs> you should go check that video out. But before Mario can head back to start <clears throat> sipping Mai Tais in his throne room, he's it looks like Mario Iowa. is hypnotized. No, he's fucking not. He's from Iowa? Why does anybody listen to him? That's a potato st Oh, that's Idaho. <laughs> Don't listen to me. All the inhabitants of the island and <laughs> conquered Mario's castle while he was away. I also Not like bad. that the story in the instructions booklet is told from Mario's perspective, who mentions that Wario has been jealous of his popularity ever since they were boys. We'll look more into that <laughs> oh. later. For now, Mario has All to right. go track down the six golden coins that Wario oh, spread Oh, corn. That's the corn state. No, I thought that was Indiana because a Husker. No, Huskers are in Nebraska. Around the island. America sucks. And since they serve as the keys to his castle. And you'd think Mario would take these with him if Wario has tried this multiple times already. Anyway, Mario sets off to the six major zones on his island to get back each of the six golden coins, uh -huh. each guarded by a different boss like Witch and Big Bird. I know I complained about the lack of localization for really the boss names called? from the first Super Mario Who is but that? Big Bird. I know I complained about the lack of localization for the boss. Bro, this design rules. He hoy hoy. Dude, this design is excellent. I love that. I love he hoy hoy names from the first Super Mario Land, but these shit? are definitely a bit plain. So Mario Land is split up into boss names from the first Super Mario Land, but these are definitely- Bro fights the three little pigs in the Mario zone? <laughs> what are they doing in there? Huh? Definitely a bit plain. So Mario Land is split up into the tree zone, space zone, macro zone, pumpkin zone, play sure pumpkin feels zone? <laughs> turtle zone, and Mario zone, which gives this game a really diverse set of levels. Cool. Each with much more oh elaborate God, backgrounds and level design than the first game. <gasps> Topanga. Yes, they even featured Tatanga as a boss in the space zone, Tatanga, returning as Wario's minion wondering. to get revenge against Mario. So while Mario here is collecting the golden coins, let's see how this game and Wario came to be. Super Mario Land 2's development was once again handed back to Nintendo R&D 1, the team responsible for the first Super Mario Land title. Dude, and uh, Nintendo offices to Nintendo are so boring. I don't know what I'm expecting. I don't know why I expect it to look like... Uh, <laughs> Like, I, I went to the Nintendo offices, and I expected that shit to look like this. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool! Awesome! Conference rooms everywhere! Let's have a meeting up by the flag! But it, it's so... It's just brutalist. The team responsible for the first Super Mario Land title. Man. And Gunpei Yokoi would return Bro, as the producer. It's Willy this would be yet another title without the involvement of the I'm trying to win the Miyamoto, Nintendo studio. With another department, Nintendo Entertainment Analysis and Development. And if you're curious, they're probably working on Super Mario Kart around this time. The developers of Super Mario Land 2 wanted to take another departure from what was already established in Mario titles. One of these major changes was oh, removing Daisy, a princess Daisy. from the equation <laughs> and instead having to have Mario strive to get something back that once belonged to him. 
But who would he be fighting against? Well, the team made several attempts to determine this and rejected many designs for the game's antagonist in the process. Hiroji Kiyotake was a young developer on the team at the time and served as one of the directors for the game. He'd be the one to introduce the idea oh. of Wario, with his name being one of the very first things they all agreed upon. Oh the name itself is a combination of Warui, the Japanese word for bad, and Mario. And it just so happens if you flip the M on Mario's cap, you get a W. I guess Whoa. we can thank the alphabet for that one. You're welcome! So Kiyotake would work with the assistant character designer Takehiko Hosokawa to flesh out the details, wanting to give a Bluto to Mario's Popeye. And seeing they did the same thing to come up with Donkey Kong, Popeye really deserves our thanks for all the inspiration he's brought into the Mario oh, yeah, universe. The design would be finalized by none other than Yoichi Kotabe, the, the lead artist for the Mario series at that time with him drawing inspiration from both Bluto and Stromboli, one of the antagonists from <laughs> Disney's Pinocchio. Oh, and if you guys were so, wondering, kinda. Wario weighs 308 pounds, and this is what he looks like on the inside. But if you guys were- Bro has a roach in his brain. Oh my god. How dirty do you have to be? That, you know, really, that roach is Wario. Because that roach is probably pulling all the strings, dude. That roach is probably responsible for all of Wario's feeling and, be and beliefs and actions. Huh. As we're wondering, Wario weighs 308 pounds, and this is what he looks like on the inside. I never asked for this. So this Wait. detail isn't crazy Wait. in pounds, and this is what he looks like on... Is that what I think it is? Is this what I think it is? Why are they showing that? Is this an is this an official render? Oh my god, dude. It's disgusting. On the inside. I never asked for this. So oh. this detail isn't crazy important, but I found it funny that Kiyotake's favorite enemy in the game was the bee fly in the tree and macro zones. The way they're programmed, you can take them out by just jumping on them since they fly away too fast. Uh -huh. And apparently this amused Kiyotake to the point where he was laughing out loud when he first interacted with them <laughs> and mentioned how excited he was to see players get frustrated while struggling to take them out. I love useless characters that do nothing in games. So the first time I saw the bee fly, I burst out laughing. He just flies away. Honestly, that probably would make me laugh. Because you think that you're supposed to chain jumps onto them. <laughs> they just escape. So if you all ever wondered if game developers funny. laugh themselves to sleep at your misfortune in a video That's game. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. This game is a classic gem, and even though it obviously serves as a... Tony, click on this. There it is. His... Oh my god. His bladder holds 1.1 gallons. Damn, he has 10 rolls of abs. Wario's strong, dude. He's like strong fat. It's like a strong man competition thing. The dude throws logs. Ugh equal to Super Mario Land, it's an improvement in every possible way. It's lengthier, more Look challenging. Look at the foot caption. Nice try, viewer. <laughs> thing has interesting Isn't that kind of stream? And a banging soundtrack by Nintendo's sound veteran and Yoshi's voice actor, Kazumi Totaka. I definitely recommend checking this out if you haven't. It still holds up pretty well and even has a ROM hack called Super Mario Land 2 DX that gives the entire game a splash of color, oh, that's which honestly neat. breathes new life into it. Anyway, yeah, let's neat. see how Mario. doing. I'm not doing. playing that shit, though. Oh, nice. You have the last golden coin. Well, it's off to Mario's castle to finally take down Wario, and we've come full circle with Wario <laughs> grinding his feet on Mario's couch. This yeah. is an interesting boss battle in itself, as Wario goes through three phases using different power-ups that Mario has been Look utilizing within the course of the game. Why is Despite he so Wario's smiley? best efforts, Mario wins the day, and Wario is reduced to a crying mess on the floor. Aww. This was a nice touch. But well, with Mario's castle reclaimed and peace restored to his lands, him, what happens to Wario? Well, before we get into that, I wanted to take a look at the earliest point chronologically in Wario's timeline. Seeing as Mario mentions him in the manual for Super Mario Land, it's safe to say that they've met before, but where exactly did they meet? 
Well, we'd see their very first meeting in a game known as Yoshi's Island DS. Uh -huh. I spoke about this game in more detail in Mario's origin video, but I think we need to talk about it for Wario's sake here. So in Yoshi's Island DS, Bowser goes back I in thought time he's transitioning and kidnap a bunch of babies yeah, I was really from Mushroom Kingdom to in hopes to like, find eh. the seven star children, a set of kids that have magical stars within them that, when collected, can make someone the ruler of the universe. I don't know what? how that works, but that's what the story says. Baby Mario, the Luigi, kids have and stars Peach are kidnapped in them? by Kamek and the Toadies, but this kidnapping is cut short by the stork who's finally had it with these guys coming to kidnap babies. Wait, this game ruled? Wait, was this one good? I thought Yoshi's Island was the bad one. With the bad music. Isn't that this one? Nope, it's good. That's New Island. Oh my god. Wait, really? Yoshi's New Island is terrible. I don't remember them. I only played the first one. This scuffle causes Kamek and the Toadies to drop Mario and Peach. Ooh, and they fall into the care the, of the Yoshis, who go on an adventure to stop Bowser and save Yoshi all the said, children. Ah. We see baby Wario as one of these babies oh, so who was cute. also kidnapped, but the Toadies couldn't take his crying anymore, so they abandoned him in a cave. I gotta say, that's pretty funny. Yoshi, along with the other babies, find Wario and take him along for the... <laughs> I don't think you guys have seen the new emote yet. Hold on. <laughs> 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 that's a good one i love that one it's so hd it's so well made look at it it's so saturated too <laughs> venture chronologically this serves as mario and wario's very first meeting there's not much to baby Wario here as they based a lot of his personality on his future greedy <laughs> persona with looks. him even leaving the group for a bit to join bandits and later on, he would even feud with Baby Bowser for a bit over <laughs> He's treasure. Screaming. Yoshi's Island DS is one of those Hooray! Mario plots that he you won. don't think too hard about. Especially with this baby DK being the source of a lot of debate. But I'll save that rabbit hole for another video. Oh, Carlito already explained that one away, bro. Must not be a Carlito fan. Don't even make that video. Carlito already covered it. We get a little more context to Mario and Wario's earlier encounters in 1993 from a short comic series called Mario vs. Wario, published within the pages of Nintendo Power issue number 44. Bro, I played the shit out of this game. This Mickey Mouse game. Oh my god. You get to be a firefighter and Robin Hood. Not really Robin Hood. You get a grapple hook. Oh, dude. Magical Quest went crazy. Coney never beat this game. Yes, I did. Lots. Of times. <laughs> Plenty. Four. That game rules. <laughs> the comic was intended to give a little bit more background on why Wario is so adversarial to yeah, Mario. What's his problem? And it opens with Mario getting a letter from Wario inviting him to a party at his house so they can catch up after 20 years. Aww. So after getting the letter, Mario's actually pretty excited to go visit Wario and Aww, takes a sweet. moment to reminisce the good times that they had as children on his way there. Meanwhile, we see that Wario never enjoyed their time together. Accusing Mario of bullying him the whole time, especially when they played cowboys as children. Out of the 1,255 times they played cowboys, Wario only got to be the sheriff once. You find out Aww. most of the misfortune here that Wario is describing isn't exactly Mario's fault, but the what? grudge has already been born as Wario intends to get his revenge upon Mario's arrival. Dude, he just got bullied then. That's kind of sad. I, well, I mean, listen, Mario didn't know... He was just a kid, I guess, but Most of the events still. in this comic has Mario being ambushed by the bosses from Super Mario Land 2, but he just kind of naively stumbles his way through each of these encounters. Like in his fight with Witch, she throws pots at him Wario and he ends up latching old. it onto I mean, his shoes. A long time he ends ago. up just thanking her and uses <laughs> them to walk across water on his Come way on, to Wario. You know? I don't know if he sense any he snark like here from Mario. Come I just on. think he legitimately thinks these bosses are playing around with him. Anyway, Mario finally arrives oh God, at Wario's castle and immediately Wario attacks. But just by pulling his air plug on his clothes, Wario deflates down to a much smaller size and once again accuses Mario of always being a bully. This seems to be complete news to Mario and he tells Wario to let bygones be bygones and- Bro said, don't be such a wimp. Okay. <laughs> Come on, cheer up. You've been mad and seething for 20 years. Just don't do that. Okay. <laughs> Wario's such a pussy, dude. Come on, do something. Mario's such a piece of shit, man. What a pushover. And to stop being a wimp? Hmm. 
Maybe Mario actually is a bully. To add insult to injury, the comic ends with Mario whipping out the old sheriff outfit to traumatize <laughs> Mario once again. So this comic Let was re-released a couple of times with a reprint in the Super Mario Adventures comic, and later as a downloadable file on the Wario Land 4 website. Speaking of which, this website was what? called Welcome to Greedville, which apparently is called the hometown of Wario. You had oh. the opportunity to play games at Wario's arcade and earn Wario bucks, and then spend those bucks at the Wario Mart so you can get like wallpapers and screensavers and all that cool stuff Yo. i always thought i actually did so this was like a thing back in like web 1.0 for a while and i think it was a thing on like ubisoft like the uplay thing that they had which was like steam where like you would turn in like achievement points for wallpapers and i remember thinking okay that's lame but they're probably gonna have like a really cool thing down the line right like eventually they're gonna figure something out and they're gonna have a way to like ship you a physical prize for stuff you do online that'd be really cool and then it never happened so you could only get like screen savers and wallpaper and i guess it's just the logistics don't add up but i remember thinking like oh th this is some really cool stuff that might be a big deal later you know you could get skins in some games. Yeah, but never good ones, you know? Nintendo America still does that. I kind of, but, like, it's always, like... Whenever I go through, like, the, the Nintendo Club whatever coin thing, it's always, like, three months of an Animal Crossing calendar. <laughs> and it doesn't have the dates. It's just, like, January, picture of Isabel. February, Tom Nook. Uh, March, Cap'n. That's it! And then they don't release the next three months. It's just January through March. Yo, leave me a comment if you still use a screensaver, bro. I had to take a second to cover Welcome to Greedville because I miss when web pages used to do things like that. I don't think it's clear whether this was supposed to be a simple retelling of Super Mario how Land all websites 2 or if it serves as events websites, that happened you know? before that game. I'll just let you all be the judge. Either way, it gives us there a rare look at some early sites. interactions between Mario and Wario, and this also paints Wario here as a more misunderstood character, if anything else. So with Wario being Wario ousted dude. from Mario's castle, Nintendo wasn't finished with him yet, with the team at Nintendo R&D 1 coming together oh, again to make his ball. very he's own title. Really ball, there was actually. one game in between that that wasn't made by them, though. By the yoga. By the yoga. Oh, this is that game that didn't come out in America with a, a Japanese exclusive puzzle platform title called Mario and Wario yeah, was released mouse, for the right? Super Famicom in 1993. Yeah. But this time it was developed by a tiny indie company at the time called Game Freak. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. So not only was this exclusive in Japan, but you needed a Super Famicom mouse to play. Good. Essentially, Mario, Peach, Luigi, and Yoshi are looking for some forest fairy to Yoshi. find happiness. I guess they were all going through something at that time. Anyway, they lose Luigi, and while heading off to find him in the forest, Wario just throws a bucket from the sky onto Mario's head. <laughs> Got him! <laughs> Mario. I, I don't Hold know. On. Hold on, I gotta- I really gotta- I gotta have this ready more often. Actual got him! Oh, I think Mario deserves this. Anyway, instead of pulling it off his head, you control the forest fairy Wanda with the mouse, helping to guide him to Luigi at the end of each level. It's a pretty simple concept, and this game doesn't really give any extra yeah, you, details I on think Wario himself, but I thought it would be interesting to bring up, seeing as this is one of the smaller wow. games Game Freak put out at the time. <laughs> Bro, if I'm, but I if I'm Wario, be I'd be so fucking mad. You're just trying to harass Mario, and this little pixie with a fucking hammer is just bashing you. Stop! Up, seeing as this is one Stop! of the smaller titles, Game Freak. Mario, help! Time to bring in some is she with you? On the first Pokemon help! Title. They did also work on a Yoshi game before this, simply called Yoshi for the Game Boy oh. and NES, which would serve as their first contract with Nintendo. So, to an extent, Mario, Yoshi, How would you even and know Wario if they're all together? played a part in getting Pokemon <laughs> off the ground. How about that? Okay, now let's talk about Wario Land. Wario's first title of his own would serve as a sequel to Super Mario Land 2. They even used the subtitle Super Mario Land 3, so I guess they really Damn. wanted people to know even that this was technically a Mario indicated. game. Released in early 1994, you play as- Best NES game? Yoshi? Are you kidding me? I owned that game. It's not good. It's bad. Yoshi's cookie goes crazy. Yoshi itself is bad. It's just egg bottom, put stuff on top, egg top. That's it. It's is bad. Wario on a quest Yoshi's to get his cookie own goes after crazy. Getting kicked out of Mario's. He sets up to steal cookie a golden statue excellent. of Princess Peach to sell for enough money to buy his castle. I love the manual's version of this, by the way. One day, Wario was practicing being mean. 
There you go. That's an actual pastime for Wario. The man well, now goes he's on an to asshole. say that Wario heard a rumor he that the statue of now Peach was asshole. already stolen by the pirates of Kitchen Island, known as the Brown Sugar Pirates, with their infamous leader, Captain Syrup. Dude, that's a cool design. I like that duck. Old Nintendo designs do go crazy, truly. Being known worldwide for being a rotten, ruthless Look at man. Buckethead, dude! There's something about these old, like, old NES designs that I love. I'm going to show you one of my favorite enemy designs in any game. Are you ready? I fucking love this guy so much. I love Mouser. He's so cool. Just a little mouse that throws bombs. I think he's so cool. <laughs> I don't know why he's so... I, there's something about him, man. Like, I think I just like bombs. I think he's so cool, man. I love Mouser. So Wario sets out to go steal it from them. And from the jump, this game takes the basics from Mario, but adds a nice twist by putting more emphasis on branching paths, exploration, and coin collecting. The amount of coins you have will slightly change the ending of the game, so definitely a nice touch. Wait, you Wario pull, has his indus coins you, can you pick have. pick different... Play ways you go will slightly change the ending neat. of the game, so definitely a nice touch. Wario has his indestructible charge attack and power ups of his very own, which definitely is a welcome change to the Mario formula. I remember the appeal of playing as the villain oh, for once and game? feeling okay. so powerful as Wario and just growing to love how goofy he was. So when he reaches the final showdown at Syrup Castle with the brown sugar pirates, you find out that Captain Syrup is a woman. What? Yeah, this was supposed to be a big twist. They even hid that from the player in the manual. But oh. before Wario can claim the statue from her, she summons a genie to kill him. But Wario defeats Can't it and grabs the fighting. land as treasure as well. With Captain Syrup defeated and the Peach statue found, it's time for Wario what to claim surprise. his prize. Yeah. What? Mario, don't. Mario, that's not yours. Where did you oh, get wow. a helicopter? Mario is actually a bully. You I'm didn't do kidding. anything! I reclaiming the statue, but this is a pretty funny cameo nonetheless. It's okay though. Wario has a whole what an of asshole. random wishes now, so in the end, he still gets oh, his he castle, gets a genie? but he has to pay the genie with all the money and treasures he's gathered on his adventure. Yo, kill me with this! Wait, so he has to pay well the, the genie? Does, the ending changes here, with the best options being a whole planet or a castle. And if he really sucked at the game, the genie will give Wario his very own birdhouse. <laughs> Why is the genie? Why is the genie concerned with material things? Why is the genie? He, you can't take it with you. The genie could create anything. Why does the genie want financial compensation? Wario kind of likes this birdhouse. He, I don't think Wario is too hard to please, right? Look at him. For some reason, this seems like the more fitting end. Genie's got to pay bills, too. He literally doesn't. He lives in a lamp. There's no electricity. <laughs> what are you talking about? He has no nerves to feel cold or hot. He doesn't need AC. And so that ends Wario Land, solidifying him as a permanent character in the Mario universe. Cool. The success of this game opened the door for a whole Wario Land series, with the follow-up game I Virtual Boy Wario Virtual Land Boy. being released Ew. for the Virtual Boy in 1995. Can you emulate Virtual Boy? Is that a thing you can do? Yeah? What does that look like? I think I've asked this on stream before. It's obviously not 3D, but... Can you can you emulate Virtual Boy in VR? <gasps> that would be cool. Looks like this. The Nazi. Next up, if you have a controller, play. no, I don't. Scenes, so there's some pretty cool stuff that you can actually do on Virtual Boy these days. So being it, it is weird like that Virtual Boy was just straight up red. <laughs> no, it's it's red and black. Instant headache. Dude, I owned a Virtual Boy. That, it, it, it was so bad. It wasn't even about the red and black as much as it was your neck was like this. Like, you ha it was on the table and you had to go like this. You see this posture? Think of, think, of, think of my vertebrae. Like this. And you had to do this for hours. It's like that. <laughs> it hurts so bad. It's awful. You got to put a book under it. Even then, it doesn't help. 
She's going to sit like a shrimp. It was awful, dude. But that's going to do it for today's video. I wanted one because it was the cool new thing to have. I got marketed to. I won't go down the whole virtual boy rabbit hole in this video, but just know this system was Mario Nintendo's Tennis was crazy. Virtual reality console, Mario Tennis ruled. But everything about it was rather lackluster. Gunpei Yokoi, Mario creator Tennis. of the Mario Game Tennis Boy, was the head of this project and by extension got some of the Wario Land team to develop Virtual Boy Wario Land, bringing Wario back for another treasure hunting <laughs> cool. adventure. Ultimately, the Virtual Boy was dubbed Damn, a failure really and good. discontinued within a year, only selling 770,000 units within its lifetime. This was unfortunately when Gunpei Yokoi would step down and leave Nintendo, but not before he... Did people actually think the Virtual Boy was cool when it was recent? Uh, hard to say. It was probably... What year did it come out? It came out in 94? 95, so I was six. I don't think so. I think when it came out, even then, people were like, this is weird and not good. I read a lot of game magazines. I, I've been a fucking consumer since I was like five or six. I read like EGM tips and tricks. like, And I remember reviews not being great, but I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. I was like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It was mad expensive, but... Yeah. Your mom be buying you everything? She sure did. My mom was... She was a single mom with... Uh, who was... Who, I guess, like, was recently divorced and trying to win over my affection from dad. And she made a lot of money, so I was spoiled. <laughs> I was an only kid, too. I should have said that. <laughs> Poggers. By the way, ad starts in seven seconds. I could save you, but I'm not gonna... Enjoy the ad. If you don't want it, drop a prime. I haven't said this one time tonight. Go ahead and drop that prime right now. Or tier one. It's only five bucks a month. Go ahead. Do it. Chop, chop. Fast. Come on. Quickly. Having divorced parents so it must be so bad. I, you know, I, pros and cons. You get buffs and nerfs from it, I think. You know, two Christmases goes kind of crazy. Three Christmases. Four Christmases even. Because you get, you get, uh, Nuclear family, close family, and you get mom and dad, and then you also get extended family, like grandma, and then grandma on the other side. You get four Christmases, dude. That's too many Christmases? No such thing. There's no such thing as too many Christmases. Going back and forth to different houses was kind of annoying. Not if they all live in the same 30-minute radius, which we did. Went crazy, dude. A divorce during your young teens must be horrific. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, no, the strat is to make your parents get divorced when you're, like, three or younger. <laughs> I don't remember my parents being together at all. I vaguely remember sitting on my dad's lap watching Ren and Stimpy, and he played Rampart for the NES. Those are, like, my earliest memories, and they were together. That's it. That's the only thing I remember about their divorce, or pre-divorce. That's the strat, yeah. Because all children are responsible for their parents' divorce. As we all know. It's your fault. My girlfriend was kind of traumatized by her parents' divorce. It's not any easier. Yeah, it's horrific if you're old enough to recognize it. It's bad. Literally, it makes your parents apart just normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't even know, you know what I mean? But if you, like, grow up with them together, oh my god. He helped complete the creation of the Game Boy Pocket. Tragically, he'd pass away a year later after being struck by two automobiles while checking the damage on his car after a minor fender bender. Say what you will about this Jeez. man and the Virtual Boy, but he was one hell of an inventor. Rest in peace, Yokoi-san. Despite the failure of the Virtual Boy, the Wario Land series would go on, spawning several other titles that now place the focus on Wario's treasure hunting adventures. And these games introduce totally different enemies and characters from <laughs> what we've already Wario. seen in Mario's games. Why is he throwing so much? Giving Wario Land so titles much? their own charm and identity. And I gotta say, Wario World for the GameCube has probably one of the best pause screens of all time because of this song right here. Game sucks, by the way. Not a good game. I tried it just to see. I, I did not like Wario World. Not fun. Not a great game. Wario was also heavily featured in the Super Sorry. Mario manga that ran from 1988 to 1998, <laughs> published by Kodansha. I discussed this a little more in the Daisy video, I mean, there but are so this many manga good games also on the has GameCube. adaptations Why would you get that? of Super Mario Land 6 Golden Coins and Wario Land Super Mario Land I hate 3. Wario humor, to be honest. Dude, no. That's... Wario humor is excellent, except for that. That pause screen I'm not into. But Wario... Bo like, Wario World is very funny, but it's just not that fun. 
We see Wario introduce pretty much how he debuted Name in the game. Name one good game on the GameCube, Pikmin 1 and 2. That's all I need. Thank you both, Crescent. And taking over Mario's castle That's while it. Mario's busy smooching with Daisy. Wario's just haha -ha stinky? No! No, War I think Wario's comedy comes in the absurdity and the, like, the, the lengths to which the characters are over-designed. Wario is like, it's... It's so over the top with his shit. I'm talking about his world in general. There's I think Wario, I think Wario like his manga, design and, and his even games involves are Luigi, Peach, and Daisy within the events of Super Mario Land 2. We get to see all the zones and bosses from the game as you well. You guys only know about Wario from Smash. Creative and hilarious spin Name on these one encounters. joke besides haha -ha, stinky greedy. Okay, hold on. <laughs> How about this guy? How about this boss at the end of Wario World? <laughs> you think this isn't a joke? <laughs> you think they, they they didn't put in this porcelain mask thing to be... What the fuck is that? What am I looking at? <laughs> what about this boss in Wario World, which is just a baby angel cherub that you beat the shit out of? Huh? Huh? <laughs> this lizard guy? Wario, Wario design is very funny. I'm a big fan. This was the same volume Doesn't where Wario hit like transforms Kirby. Daisy Kirby into great. Wallow Daisy, and she starts transforming Luigi and Peach into Waluigi and Wallow Peach. There are definitely some spicy interactions here. In the end, Mario and the others collect all the golden coins, and he has this epic showdown with Wario at the top Ugly of the castle. Ugly is the joke. And honestly, Kinda. I'm surprised at how many bit. pages this fight Ugly takes. Ugly equals Kazuki bad. Kazuki Motoyama went all out on this fight, but in the end, Mario is once again victorious. But Ooh. shout out to the chef over at the Fungi Forums for archiving this manga. This hero put everything he had in one place, and this seems to be one of the few places to find scans of this so series on the piece. internet. I'll link this in the description below so you all can check it out. Wario would also go on to be featured in almost every Mario spin-off and sports title, and has been a part of the Smash Sick roster of since Super Smash Bros. Brawl. But before I go on to his famous WarioWare series, I have to take a second to talk about his voice. <laughs> We first hear his voice <laughs> in Mario Kart like 64, that. but there are two different voice actors at play here. The international version of Mario Kart 64 featured oh, yeah, Charles this is Martinet like the German guy, as the voice right? actor for Wario. I didn't mention him in Mario or Luigi. What? 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 Why is he dressed like that? He's dressed like a Wario World boss. Charles? Pimpmaster Martinet? No one else around him is dressed like that. He's not even... He's comically overdressed. Dragon Ball drip. <laughs> wait, yeah, wait, is this in a Dragon Ball movie? What is Charles doing? And for what? Is this cosplay? Oh, it's cosplay. Ah, okay. All right, yeah, 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 all right, Charles. Never mind. I'll give it up. My bad. My bad. You're right, Charles. I'll let it go. I'll let it go. My bad. Luigi's video, but this man breathes so much life and personality into the How Mario. How tall cat. is he? He's the voice of Mario, Luigi, Wario, and Waluigi, and truly manages to capture the essence of their characters with the limited speech that they're given within these games. So even though Nintendo clearly portrays Wario as a greedy, bratty, and somewhat goofy character, I'd say that Martinet's portrayal of him is He's the icing six, on the cake. Three? There was one other voice actor Wario had for the Japanese. Charles Martinet is six foot three. <laughs> what? Oh my god! He ate a mushroom. That's so stupid. You're so dumb for typing that. That's so dumb. That's not that tall. 6'3 is not that tall. You don't think 6'3 is that tall. That's so dumb. That's <laughs> dumb. <laughs> Finney's so, version of Mario I'm Kart so 64. Call and all versions of Mario Party one and two. He was voiced by German <laughs> translator Thomas Spindler. In 2015, Spindler oh, left so a comment mad. on a YouTube video he's called so Wario angry, Speaks dude. German, 
which has a voice line from Mario Party with Wario saying, So I missed. So I missed. That's not what he which said. translates to Aw Darn in English. No, he said, Spindler's oh, comment mentions that the Nintendo staff envisioned he Wario said, to be oh, German I missed. and directed Spindler to voice him with that in mind. But with Charles Martinet fully taking on the role at some point, that German background is more or less gone, with Martinet giving him a more Italian portrayal. Just a little side note, I swore that Wario was saying, Oh, I missed this yeah, whole time. So this little fact here has closed a chapter for me, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. No, Wario has not, one no, other popular series that gained Wario some traction over the years, and it is known as WarioWare. Yo! The first game in the series, WarioWare Inc. Mega Micro Games, was released for the Game Boy Advance in 2003. Bro, uh, oh my god. Honestly, <clears throat> WarioWare is a pretty neat, like, innovative concept, but I was just talking before about how if you put a famous, like... You'll, you'll bring, like, a cool idea, and people will be like, hey, that's not going to sell. Put Diddy Kong in it or put Fox in it. You, you I would have never bought that game if Wario wasn't in it. <laughs> I love WarioWare games to death, but if Wario wasn't in that shit, I'd be like, Mona who? Mona Pizza? Oh, that dude's name is Jimmy, and he likes disco? Cool, man. <laughs> WarioWare was unironically super revolutionary for mobile games. Yeah, dude, like, WarioWare, honestly, is, is I think, a, a huge sort of feather in Nintendo's cap in terms of, it's just a sick idea, you know? This was a rather big departure from Wario's previous Wario event. sells? I don't think that's true. WarioWare sold like shit. <laughs> with him deciding to settle one did down very and bad. start up a video game but studio it's good. called WarioWare Inc. to legitimately bring in some cash. It's still crazy to me that after all we've discussed today, Wario just said screw it and decided to open up a small business. This series was made by, you guessed it, Nintendo R&D 1, who were inspired by a game they created called Mario Artist Polygon Studio for the Nintendo 64 Dynamic Drive. If you're not like familiar with the 64DD, it was a disc attachment for the N64 that was only sold released like a million, in Japan which is in bad 1999. For Nintendo it was ultimately ca Okay, uh, no bit here. Is a million sales good? What's what's good sales? I feel like a million sales on the Switch is not good. Depends on the game. Yeah, but I I mean like if we're talking Nintendo first party, a you have one of your main characters in it. Not good, right? Depends what you told the shareholders. <laughs> if I'm a shareholder and Reggie is like, "Guys, we're making a new Wario. I'm Doc leaving. <laughs> I'm taking my money. I'm getting out of there. Get me out of here. I'm not trying to hear a new WarioWare game. Make me some money. Make me a Zelda. Make me eight Marios. I feel like all these Kirbys. I, I'm starting to get sick of Kirby. No more Kirbys. <laughs> Kirby's done. Only Zeldas and only Marios. And that's it canceled in the United States since it performed so poorly. Regardless, Mario Artist Polygon Studio gave players the ability to create 3D objects, add textures to them, and paint them within a <laughs> Jesus. sandbox Oh my god! So essentially oh, taking Mario that truck was fast. I bring up this Yeesh. game because there's a minigame feature called Sound Bomber, which had the player attempt to get through several minigames in quick succession. Sound familiar? No. Oh, yes. that's cool. Nintendo R&D 1 wanted to take this formula Neat. and build an entire game from it. But why Wario as the I didn't star? Know that. Well, developer Yoshio Sakamoto mentions, quote, We got the idea of using Wario and the other characters because we couldn't think of anyone else who would be- The most a Wario were sold for is 2.5 mil. What is that, the GameCube one? The budget for WarioWare titles has always been small, so it breaks even. Ah, uh, WarioWare is like the Blumhouse of the Nintendo universe. Got you. Be best for the role. Wario is always doing stupid things Smooth and moves. is really oh, yeah, idiotic, so sense. we thought yeah, him yeah. and the rest of the characters would be best for the game. I feel like Sakamoto here used this interview as an excuse to roast Wario. So to keep the ideas flowing, each person on the team came up with their own mini games, and the programmers created their own graphics for each mini game. That's so which cool. Which is why the art styles are so wildly different between rounds. Miyamoto was I also excited that. about the game, giving it the slogan Saita Saitan Saisoku, meaning more, shorter, faster. 
which definitely rolls off the tongue better in Japanese. And with that, the WarriorWare series was born, featuring the gameplay of mindless guys, don't say it. intuitive micro games back to back in rapid succession <laughs> as the game increases in speed and difficulty for the player. The game features a whole new set of characters from a town called Diamond City and are introduced as Wario's friends. Th this is a different video now. For Wario Wear, Inc. I thought Their we were talking about Mario. Actually successful, but in classic I don't care Wario about fashion, dribbling he tries spits. to swindle his employees and makes a break for his escape rocket with all the money that they earned. But Dr. Krygor here accidentally hits the rocket. Oh my god! What? Which causes Wario and his money to fall into the sea, and he dies forever. Just what? Kidding. There were eight more WarioWare titles after this. Eight WarioWare games? There are that many? Nine now. Oh, the Switch one's not on here. Oh my god, dude. I didn't know there were that many. I guess they are easy to make. Jesus. Now, I know I didn't cover everything there is to know about Wario, like the fact that he had a spinoff called Wario's Woods, or the fact that he likes strawberry crepes as his favorite food until it was changed to garlic. I didn't oh, cover everything, crepes is but I damn near tried. I like That's that where one. the comments come in. Let me know your favorite. Who is Princess Daisy? Oh, now I'm curious. I don't want to fall down this rabbit hole. I, I'm mad here. Who is she, dude? We played the DS game on stream once, right? No, I watched, uh, I watched, I played Wario World once. I'm a daisy simp. I don't care that much about daisy. I played a WarioWare hack. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, I played, uh, Kelkador had a WarioWare hack with like a billion games in it. <laughs> it was great. I remember that one now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. Coney, Peach, Daisy, or Rosa? I'm a Daisy guy. I'm a Daisy guy. Uh, Rosa's the worst. Rosalina clears. I just... Uh, she doesn't do anything. Rosalina doesn't do anything. She just stands there. Like, she she straight up doesn't have any personality or... Fe like, she's nothing. She's just an animatronic. What does Peach do? Generally be feminine. <laughs> Peach is active. Peach it, it just is Mario, but a girl. she just generally exists. Rosa just stands there like this. Ooh. I don't know what her, her thing is. And Daisy is like fun and upbeat. And spunky. What about Pauline? What about Pauline? I don't. She's the mayor, right? I don't. I don't know. They brought her back so people would soy face. <laughs> Remember this? She's back, and she's the mayor. Girls get it done. <laughs> How progressive, <laughs> yo! <laughs> this one is more readable. Hold on. We have another one. Is a new got him? Ah, that one's a little better. We'll switch. There you go. All right, fine, fine. Let's hey, figure everyone. it out. We'll figure it out. It's it's a short one. If I sound a little weird, it's a short I'm... one. Who the fuck is Daisy? Under the weather, so uh, we're gonna get through this one way or another. All right, thanks. This what's is her deal? Of Sarasaland. Looks the same. Well, you gotta update. I think you gotta like refresh, dude. It's got this knockoff Goomba. A sphinx, pyramids, this weird Moai statue that ever. Yo! <laughs> There's my guy, Hiyoi Hoi. Hoi Hoi. Ahoy Hoi. That's the sound Mr. Burns makes when he answers the phone. <laughs> Ahoy Hoi. Everyone was throwing in their Splatoon lockers. And Princess Daisy. I remember that being really controversial. She touches her b b b butt? Huh? Princess Daisy is one of those characters I've seen many Mario fans advocating to. How do you guys feel about this Daisy design? I like her with the tan. I love tan Daisy. Tan Daisy rules. Return in an actual Super Mario game. She's the sassier, more outspoken princess within the franchise, and in my opinion, grossly underutilized. 
But how did she come to be? And why does Nintendo restrict her to sports games and spin-offs? Let's take a deeper dive into her origins. Oh, Daisy Welcome Daisy. Welcome everyone to Origin Oracle. Kick back, grab a snack, and let's head back in time. Okay. Here we go. It's no secret that Princess Daisy made her debut in the- Why does she look like that? <laughs> uh, Mario, are you saving a doll? Mario's trying to get back his real doll. Which was stolen from him. It would be very embarrassing if anybody found out. He will go to any length to return that. Has to make sure Peach doesn't discover it. This alien is trying to expose him. The original Game Boy title, Super Mario Land, released in 1989. What's this guy's deal? Oh, aren't those like yokai? Isn't that what this is? Right? Like the like the guy from Darkstalkers, uh, hyo, hyo, you know the one. It's Chinese, Chinese zombie, Chinese vampire, Chinese ghost, Chinese spirit, <laughs> Chinese zombie, Chinese vampire, Chinese zombie, Chinese ghost, Chinese spirit, Darkstalkers, hopping zombie vampires. What the fuck are you talking about? Even Chinese. I mean, this, this, this girl. Is it this? Is she one? I am not scrolling down. Shenko. Yeah. Yeah? All right. My ass is staying up here. Much like Princess Peach within the Super Mario. Why is Peach so, so small? <laughs> I don't remember her being this tiny. Actually, let me address this one time because I had a vocal minority getting pretty upset that I referred to this title as Super Mario Bros. I love corrections in the comment section because that's what keeps me in check. But it got to the point where people were condescendingly telling me the definition of an abbreviation in the comment section. Dude, I'm I'm so glad that nobody has to believe or think anything that I say is real or true. I can't imagine being a content creator and having people in your comments being obnoxious. That happened at PG Stats, actually. They would cover tournaments and be like, oh, you actually forgot about this one 60-man uh, local from uh, 2019. Dr. Mario won this tournament, so actually that's the most impressive result he ever had. <laughs> they say, no, man. Like, we're not... After every tournament, why don't they talk about Japan? Where's Japan? Actually, Nano was the lead there. That's another one. Yep. Yep, actually, Coney, that's Nana, not Popo. Shut the fuck up. Like English teachers on crap. I'm surprised you don't get people taking you seriously. I actually don't. You're right. It's actually not not common at all. But I think it's because I I have a reputation for not for lying a lot of the time. You know. Guys, I know this is an abbreviation for because brothers. you're stupid. Bro well, no, I'm not. Hold on, my food's here. I'll be right back. Mal just texted me. Guess what I got? Guess what I got? Run, mods, run a prediction on what kind of food I got. And you'll see in a second. All right? I'll be right back. One sec. Okay, ready? <laughs> Applebee's? Uh-huh. Yeah. Mexican salad. Applebee's or other. I can't believe Mexican was the first one. It's a burrito. It's always Chipotle. Listen, Mallory ordered it. Mallory ordered it, and I, I, dude, a 9.20 p.m. burrito, not a great choice. But Mallory said she was ordering it. So here we are. <laughs> Why did so many people bet Applebee's? What were you thinking? Are you new viewers? What the fuck? Bros and brothers in this context. Zero percent said salad. Come on, guys. 
I'm trying to do better. <laughs> it's the early 90s. I got literally the opposite. People who sleep at night when fans refer to this game. Okay. Got telling me the definition of an abbreviation in the comment section. Like English teachers on crack. Guys, I know this is an abbreviation for brothers. I've used bros and brothers in this context interchangeably since the early 90s. And I have to wonder if these same people who sleep at night when fans refer to this game as Super Smash Bros. <laughs> Do they visibly cringe when they ask for directions and someone says make a left on 7th Ave? Anyway, corrections are always welcome, just don't be that guy. And to those who politely correct- Never correct me. I hate that shit. I don't care. Unless it's interesting. If you have an interesting correction, or a funny correction, then correct me. Me. Thanks for being civil. Here's a virtual cookie. And for the sake of accuracy, though, from now on, I'll pronounce this game exactly as <laughs> Nintendo intended. Is very good. Much like Princess Eddie Peach and Super Mario Brazas, released in 1985, Princess Daisy was intended to play a similar role as the damsel in distress in Super Mario Land. So this story kicks off with an Yo, evil it's space that alien! Tatanga invading Sarasa Land and kidnapping Daisy to make her his queen. Just kidding, this guy's name's Tatanga, but I can't think of anything else when I hear that name. I think so that Tatanga too. here will I do the also same hypnotize thing. the citizens of Sarasa Land to help him with his what plan. What has he been Enter up to? Mario, who will go on a journey to each of he Sarasa Land's four kingdoms to stop Dude, I would Tatanga. think that was a mushroom. Enter Mario. Enter Mario. Enter Mario. Enter Mario. Enter Mario. What do the mushrooms look like? I would pick that shit up. We'll go on a journey. I would eat these goombas. Journey to each of Sarasa Did he Land's die? Four kingdoms He's an alien. How do you know? He might not peace die. Back to the nation. He might it's be a like, a, simple like story a space overall, jellyfish. But I always loved how different the aesthetic was here in comparison to Super Mario Brazas. Because there is so much weird shit going on here. Like these things here. They're called goombos. Oh my god, what is that? They operate goombos? and look very similar to goombas, but the change is just subtle enough for this to look off-putting. Okay. What's the other one? What are the new Goombas that are in, is it, uh, new Mario Bro, what is it? You know what I'm talking about. Mario Galoombas. <laughs> I hate these things so much. I hate Galoombas. Oh, wait, Galoomba was in Mario's, Mario World. Oh, it was, wasn't it? They're from Mario World? Really? Huh. I hate them, though. I just want normal Goombas. You guys want to see the best designed normal enemy in any game ever? <laughs> These are my favorite normal enemy designs in any game. Uh... This guy right here. I love Bulborbs. I love Bulborbs. So much. They go, Brrr! They're so cute, dude! What about the bread bug? I literally searched that right before this to remember what the bread bug looks like. It's disgusting. I hate the bread bug. This is so nasty. I hate this guy. Also... <laughs> <laughs> I I literally started playing Pikmin 2 again today and I fought this motherfucker I forgot about the gimmick and I died I forgot about the fight in this fight literally it, it kills your whole army instantly and it's it says Pikmin extinction and I had to reload I lost all my Pikmin <laughs> I forgot what he did. It's weird because Pikmin is like one of my favorite series, but I know nothing about it and I don't like try to absorb all the info, which to me makes it cooler because I'm still surprised when I see shit. You know what I mean? This enemy is cuter. Sorry. This isn't an enemy. He's a friendly helper. Idiot. That's not an enemy. He's just like a, he's like a, a henchman to Tronbone. You fight them? I don't know that. I never played his game. The fuck? I don't like regular Mega Mans. Why do I know that? This is the best normal enemy. Yo! He's not really an enemy, though. He's an animal. You can't call an animal an enemy. He's just following his instincts. Bunger, 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 bunger. <laughs> 
<laughs> and if you really want to see something, he's not weird, an enemy. Here's a Goomba posing with Tony the Tiger in a Kellogg's Nintendo trading card. Yo, anyway, Tony and the Mario. Super Mario Land take place in Collab four different kingdoms within Serasa Land. Birabuto Kingdom, based on ancient Egypt. Muda Kingdom, based on Bermuda. Eastern Kingdom, based on Easter Island, and Chai Kingdom, based on ancient China. Each of these kingdoms have a different ruler that will cool. serve as the boss for the area since they're under Tatanga's control. But more on them later, let's quickly discuss the creation of Daisy and how Super yeah, Mario Land was set into about. motion. Tell me about Super Daisy. Mario Land was a project developed by Nintendo Research and Development One, responsible for the series like Donkey Kong, earlier Mario titles, and Metroid. This team was led by one of the bright stars at Nintendo at the time, Gunpei Yokoi, who was largely responsible for the invention of the Game Boy and the Virtual Boy, but we'll I guess that's a story for another day. As mentioned again. in previous videos, Yokoi played a huge role in the creation again. of Donkey Kong, Please. the Mario Brazas arcade game, and the Game & Watch series. So to promote the release of the Game Boy in April 1989, Nintendo CEO at the time, Hiroshi Yamauchi, wanted a set of fun launch titles that would help bolster those console sales. So he pushed for a portable Mario title with Yokoi's team leading the charge. Surprisingly, Miyamoto would not be involved in this project at all, which may explain some of the strikingly different creative liberties that we see throughout the end product. Oh, These people. inconsistencies explain some of the strikingly different creative Just liberties. Hop that oh, those are the hopping Chinese vampires that we see throughout the end. Never mind. Yeah. I see. Hopping Chinese vampires. You're right. I was like, is Mario killing people like humans? But product these inconsistencies were apparently caused by the need to shrink everything down mario to hates the, the chinese no no mario hates the undead the tiny game boy screen they just so happy so yokoi would serve as this game's producer and satoru okada who was responsible for games like metroid and kid icarus as far as would become the director that. they wanted a new setting for the game far away from the mushroom kingdom probably to explain away some of these jarring line art backgrounds but with that in mind a brand new damsel in distress was created Princess Daisy. From the very beginning, Daisy was described as an energetic tomboy, though I'm sure it was hard to depict this on a Game Boy screen. <laughs> Her name. It's, I, I can't see, like, the four bit aesthetic without thinking of Five Nights. Don't act up. Why are you acting up? It's literally like 12 pixels. One, two, three, four times one, two, three, four, five. The, her face is 20 pixels. <laughs> is it the hair? The hair does it, I guess. Can you believe people used to act up to Atari porn game? You know what's crazy? Uh, so Watch Mojo recently put out a list of the top 10 um, video game scandals, I think. And I was like, would this be fit for stream? Number one was Custer's Revenge. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not watching that. I'm not going to watch that video. <laughs> Yo, that plunging neckline, though. It's a tank top. There's not a plunging neckline. It's th th There would be one less pixel here, and that would actually denote cleavage. Her nation, Sarasa Land, has a name derived from the word Sarasa. Have you ever played Pikmin on stream? No, that is poison. Asa, a Portuguese word used to describe viewers. textiles that were Nobody imported wants to by watch Portuguese Pikmin. traders to Japan during the Edo. I will play Pikmin 4. Oh, period. Absolutely. I'm like a casual Japanese history buff, so I found that detail Absolutely. to be pretty interesting. With the release of the Game Boy approaching, it was originally intended for Super Mario Land to be bundled with every console sold, but they would later go with Tetris instead. For one instead. stream! Either way, <laughs> Super Mario Land would become the fourth best-selling Game Boy game, pushing 18 million copies worldwide. Damn! Okay, so back to Sarasa Land. Game, pushing 18 million copies worldwide. Pokemon Pinball is the number seven best-selling Game Boy game? That's crazy. That's a great game. I love Pokemon Pinball. Okay, so back to Sarasa Land. Mario takes out the four bosses, King Totomesu, Dragon Zamasu, Kiyohoi, and Biokintan. I think it's Biokintan. And I'm still shocked that these names were barely localized in the West. By the way, Biokintan here is just a straight up cloud, which I thought was really <laughs> different from the rest of the bosses. But his bio states that he's just really shy and the actual Biokintan is hiding Aww. behind the cloud. Great excuse, Nintendo. Another That's interesting cute. thing about these That's bosses actually, here nope. is that King Toto Mesu was actually ducks. discovered in some of the Super Mario Odyssey concept art. It looks like for the Sand Kingdom, they were gonna go for an Egyptian background as well and wanted to incorporate him in some form, but that idea was dropped for a more Mesoamerican style level that we got in the actual Aww. game. 
That's it actually tough. looked like Sarasa Land was planned to be one of Mario's destinations within Super Mario Odyssey. I can't Odyssey. believe it wasn't. We can see in some of the concept art, the Moai statues, and some of the mountains that are found in Chai Kingdom oh, within yeah. the concept what? art itself. But it looks like Nintendo dropped the idea and went with other concepts instead. Oh, go to so with Sarasa, all the Land. Sarasa Land! Unhypnotized after It'll their fight with two? Mario, no, he goes well, to take down Tobago. You always Tabanga. say that. This is but everybody's like, oh, Delfino Isle, Odyssey DLC. It's not happening, man. People thought they were going to be, we're going to go to Delfino Isle. It hasn't happened. Where's my Delfino? I want to see Piantas on the Switch. Let's see him do that stupid little dance. <laughs> And throw me in HD. This is a super I hate boss Nintendo. battle, by the way. You take out Bio Kington, and then Tatango just immediately pops up. People complained about how short this game was back in the day, and I, I can see why. Anyway, Mario fights in his game? airplane, the Sky Pop, to shoot down the alien invader, oh, he and died. finally he saves Princess oh, Daisy, Daisy once Daisy. and for all. I gotta point out Mario's dialogue here, real quick. Oh, Daisy. Oh, Daisy. Coney, real quick, since you are Pikmin 2 Brain, do you love or hate Louie? Hate Louie. Not a Louie fan. I only like Olimar. I will literally go out of my way to play as Olimar in that game, even though there's no difference. I, I, it, it's embarrassing, but I will give up half my day so I don't play as Louie. I do like the president. What happened like between you and Peach, Mario? I'd like to think he pulled up. I to don't Sarasa like Alf either. I only like Olimar and Charlie. I like Charlie didn't work out with Peach so well the first time around. But seriously, the relationship between Mario and Daisy around this time was kind of up in the air. There's a manga where there's a love triangle between Mario, Peach, and Daisy, which leads to some fun panels with Peach and Daisy feuding over Mario. To add insult to injury, whenever he takes out one of these bosses from Super Mario Land, there's a decoy Daisy waiting for him. One of them even gives him a kiss to later reveal himself as a disgusting fly monster. But we'll, we'll talk more about this manga a little bit later in the video. So after Mario saves Daisy in-game, they fly away in his jet oh and we never see her featured in a proper Super Mario game again. Unless you count her costume in Super Mario Maker. Or Super Mario Run. No, I don't. This is probably the closest we've gotten. No, I, I guess we can that. chalk this up to Sarasa Land being a really peaceful place while there are things blowing up in the Mushroom Kingdom every other weekend. Daisy would make her official second appearance as Luigi's caddy in NES Open Aww. Tournament Golf, released for the NES That's in 1991. That's sweet. Good for Luigi. Um, actually, she was featured as a sticker in Super Mario Brothers Print World. Where they get to face off with terrifying... What? Is that DK? I've never played Mario Golf. I, I don't know anything about is is DK like the the guy running the booth? Opponents like Steve, Mark, and Tony. This might be the first instance where it's hinted that there's a little more going on between Luigi and Ooh. Daisy here. Did you guys know did you guys know that Mona from WarioWare is uh the daughter of Luigi and Daisy? Did you know that? It's true. Look it up. Manga based on this game where she kisses true. him. Well, poor Mario Stop here it. is wondering it's how he's hit a wall with no, Peach so many true. times. I, no, it's true. No, I didn't make it up. The vault for almost I didn't make it years up. Until her next I didn't make it up. It's real. It's real. It's real. Did you guys not see the picture? Did you not see the picture? Linker, it's fake. Are you kidding? Hold on. Mona Pizza Luigi Daisy. I guess that's what I searched for. This is a photo of Mona's parents from WarioWare Switch. Mmm, real quiet now, huh? Real quiet now. Bro, that's Shaggy. No, that's Luigi. Well, well, well. Look at that. That does not look like them. Huh? That's Luigi and Daisy. It could be no one else. Look at them. Luigi ain't that tall. That is literally Luigi's defining character trait. That's Bob's Burgers. <laughs> kind of does look like Bob and Linda, doesn't it? I get that a bit. No, 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 no. That's Luigi. What is she wearing? Oh, they're like arm warmers. I was like, is this like a Sonic thing? Like her? No, no, no. Mona Pizza is Luigi and Daisy's daughter. And good for them. In the year 2000, they raised a little a sports title called lady. Mario Tennis for the Nintendo 64, developed by Camelot. Plumbers are sore losers. Something to remember when you're playing new Mario Tennis, only on N64. While Camelot would go on to develop Golden Sun and most of the Mario Golden Tennis and Ooh. golf games from that point on, it's pretty interesting that I they used to be a dev team at Smash. Sega, known for their Shining series. I think they realized Sorry, shit was hitting I the fan over at Sega Golden and moved over Dead. to Nintendo after that. 
Anyway, while they were building out the roster for Mario Tennis, they originally wanted to bring in a rival to Peach. Something similar to Wario and Waluigi, who debuted in this game by the way, but we'll get to him in another video. But Nintendo didn't like the I idea of giving Peach the video. Wario treatment, so they gave Camelot Daisy to work with instead, who would become the doubles Wario partner for Peach. Luigi. Funny enough, Camelot actually wanted to milk this further and asked Miyamoto if they could feature girlfriends for Wario and Waluigi, but Miyamoto no. politely told them to go fuck up, fuck up, fuck up, fuck up, get out! Personally, I'm really Wario's interested Daisy. to see the concept art for that Peach counterpart that made Nintendo turn the idea. Can you think of a sadder existence than being a bob -omb? Yeah, plenty. bob -omb's aren't, aren't, aren't sentient. bob -omb's are like made in a factory. Yeah, Pikmin is worse. Although, no, I think Pikmin are like ants or bees. Like they're born with the instinct to give themselves for the colony. Bobby and Paper Mario, that doesn't count. He was, everybody brings up the Paper Mario bomb that killed himself or whatever. I don't remember what happened in that game. Yeah, it, okay. It's like bees. They just give themselves to the hive. Idea down. The bombs talk in 64. Oh yeah, they do, don't they? That doesn't mean that they can't be built. There are robots and androids that communicate. They are assembled. But I also gotta mention Mario Tennis for the Game Boy Color. Don't sleep on that version because it's totally different from the N64. It has its own story mode. They you have get a to king. drive this character through the ranks until he's ready to face the Mario characters. And got they, Daisy built, they built the king too. They built the king and they programmed them all to be uh, to be deferential to the king. Up here looking like the warrior of life. Bullet Bill Fantasy. is sadder. Don't slay me in the comments, <laughs> but I think this is the better version. Also, they did similar RPG versions for Mario Tennis and Golf for the Game Boy Advance, and I think you guys should definitely check that out. All right, back to the video. So after this, this opened the floodgates the for king Princess was a Daisy to start being nuke. featured in other spin-off titles to pad out. The Could you imagine how much how much damage King bob -omb would do if he was dropped on a small nation? Mario roster for Nintendo. Like... Mario Party, Mario Kart, Mario Baseball, Super Mario Strikers, Mario Hoops, Fortune Street, Mario Golf, Yakuman DS, Super Smash That's Brothers, Yakuman. and Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. I guess we can thank Camelot for this, or specifically for trying to pitch an ugly peach for their game to Nintendo. Even though there wasn't much personality to show in Super Mario Land, they did describe her as an energetic tomboy. And Would anybody pick ugly peach? That's not true. I picked Birdo. Never mind. This has remained true within Ugly most of the spin-offs she's featured. Early on, her voice I is would. pretty timid throughout these spin-off titles. <laughs> but I don't think it's until Deanna Mustard started voicing Daisy where we start to hear that more gruff, tomboyish accent that we hear in Daisy today. We hear her first performance in Mario Golf Toadstool Tour, released in 2003 for the GameCube. But I definitely think it was in Super Mario back. Strikers where she took the character's personality and ran with it. Yeah. Yeah. She has a very I tough exterior and is shown to be pretty extroverted, which I think is one of the reasons she's liked among Mario fans. But for the most part, Daisy still has the same backstory as Princess of Sarasa Land. There's been a couple of so minor much. references to her father in Mario Party 3 and Fortune Street. What do you mean by that? The injured Mario has officially what? ruined me. But what? <laughs> Who's her dad? But nothing we could really use to piece together what's going on in Sarasa Land at this moment. On their Mario Party 6 website, she had a brief profile that said the following. Peach missed female companionship until this the girl king? with the orange I've hair moved the into king. the Mushroom Kingdom. Personally, I wouldn't describe her hair as orange, but the point still stands. It's all I'll leave it up to you guys whether or not you want to give this text any credibility. Of course, within a lot of these games, there are still hints that Daisy and Luigi Ooh, might be they're a thing, in love and they had Nintendo a daughter! confirm this. For example, if they team up in Mario Party, a couple of their team names are Steady Sweeties and Tango Tanglers. I know many people wonder why Daisy hasn't been featured in mainline Mario games, or even spin-offs like Mario and Luigi. No, 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 it's all over. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> or Paper Mario for that matter. This is a little bit of speculation, it's but really here are a couple of reasons why I think we don't see her around too much. I think there's a level of favoritism for the characters that Miyamoto helped to create. I don't see this in a petty kind of way, but I wouldn't be surprised if developers were limited in only involving the characters that get his approval in the mainline Super Mario series. I think even Pauline gets more action these days than Daisy. Paul. And it's not a secret that Nintendo places strict. I think even Bro, Pauline gets more action these off. days than Daisy. Dude. In the mainline Super Mario series. <laughs> I think even. He's like all dressed up all professionally. What if somebody from work sees you? Be humiliated. There's like not even anybody else there. And Pauline gets more action these days than Daisy. By the way, this festival 
Uh, in Mario Odyssey, one of the coolest like game things in like the, the decade. That shit was so cool. It was amazingly done. It was neat. And it's not a secret that Nintendo places strict rules on characters within the Mario universe. The other main reason is- Dude, I forgot about that, that too. In Origami King, when the Toads had their faces cut out. Oh my god, that was so scary. <laughs> Holy shit. I forgot about that. No places strict rules on characters Man. within the Mario universe. The other main reason is that she's not as popular as the others. The famous Japanese messaging platform, Line, performed a Super Mario popularity poll among people ages 10 to 59. Rosalina's and it looked like Daisy didn't even break the top 10. In her defense, this is a poll among Japanese audiences only. Yoshi is the most pop. Toad is third most popular? What? Really? That's crazy. I've no DK losing is a tragedy. I've noticed that like you could kind of tell a lot from a person from their favorite like Donkey Kong guys can be Wario guys, but Donkey Kong guys are never Koopa guys. Does that make sense? Like there's like a there there's like very little I I feel like like I'm a Toad, Wario, Donkey Kong guy. I'm those three. But I do feel like you could kind of tell somebody. I feel like I could I could guess who somebody picks in Mario Party pretty consistently based on vibes. I really think I could. I th I know it's gamer astrology. I really think I could, dude. I think it's real. By the way, if you're not a subbing guy. 33 seconds till ads. I have not said this one time tonight, fellas. If you could drop a prime, just do it right now before you forget about it. It's a way to subscribe to the channel. You're not going to get any ads for a whole month. 30 days of no ads. Huh? Wouldn't that be nice? Couldn't we all be so lucky? And it's free. You could also tier one for five bucks a month. And I forgot to do the ad shout outs. I had to do those tonight <laughs> for ExpressVPN. Whoops. Thank you, Captain Cool. Thank you, Beta Cactus. All right, I'll see you guys in three minutes. Ad starting soon. Goodbye. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, Ray's. And more than likely a limited pool of line users, but this is interesting nonetheless. Wait, where By is the way, Rosalina? Only. Rosalina's above Donkey Kong, dude. Yeah! Uh. Honey, I asked you this a year ago, but perhaps uh, the recent price of eggs has changed your mind. If you could lay your own eggs like Yushi, would you eat them? Maybe even sell them? I would sell them. Yes, absolutely. I would not tell anybody where they, would f where they were from. I would sell them, and I would change my diet to make them taste better. Uh, if, that, if that changed things. I would definitely sell them. I might eat them. But I also would be afraid of potential consequences down the line. Like, it hasn't been tested. You know how they found out smoking was bad in, like, the 1980s? I'd be worried about that. But I'd let other people eat them. They could be the guinea pigs. And then maybe when I'm, like, 60 or 70, then I eat my own eggs, you know? Gotta hit the taste test before you sell them. No, I don't. No. I just give somebody the eggs and be like, hey, I got these eggs. You want to try them? They're like, yeah. Coney, that's like eating your sperm. No, it's like eating your eggs. <laughs> There's still, if I lay an egg and, and I eat it, there, it's not the same. That's not the same thing. People would just eat eggs. People eat eggs without thinking about it. And more than likely a limited pool of line users, but this is interesting nonetheless. By the way, if you're curious, Yoshi is number one, followed by Mario and Toad. Ooh. There are a few other types of media outside of Mario games that feature Yoshi's Daisy, though. Bait. I showed a little bit before, but there was a Super Mario manga that ran from 1988 Stupid. to 1998, published by Kodansha Limited, and written solely by Japanese mangaka Kazuki Motoyama. Not to be confused with Mario-kun, by the way. Unfortunately, I couldn't Bro, find you know, translated versions of this manga, so help? I couldn't get all the juicy eggs. details from these Women panels, but the first few entries are based on Super Mario Land, apparently taking place after the events of Super Mario Come Bros. 1 and 2. Princess grade. Daisy is a friend of Princess Peach, and the story starts with her and Mario arriving in Sarasa Land. As I mentioned before, their friendship turns into a rivalry to gain Mario's attention. 
before Tatanga pulls up and kidnaps Daisy, which more or less sets the plot of the game into motion. It's honestly a very faithful adaptation as it takes into account all of the enemies and even bonus stages that Thank Mario encounters during his journey. For some yeah, where are we going here? For some reason, Peach disguises herself as a robot and also goes along with Mario I, uh, to save Daisy. This video the really got away from covers me. the entire story <laughs> of Super Mario Land and has these really detailed and charming pages I really capturing just got the lost atmosphere here. of each kingdom within Sarasa Land. If anyone can link me to a translated version of this manga series, I'd love to dive deeper as they cover a lot of the games all the way up to Yoshi's story. Anyway, after she's saved, Daisy would become Daisy. a recurring character within this series, joining Mario, Luigi, and Peach on their Mario Open Golf adventure based on NES I Open Tournament Golf. Movie. According to this entry, this seems to be where hole. Daisy starts showing interest in Luigi, because my boy here has a natural talent in the game of golf. I'm a Luigi, Don't number show that. one. Don't show she still that. Has I hated that so much. That period of the internet was god-awful. Feelings from Mario in future entries, that. though. But there's another volume loosely it's his based thigh. on the events of Super Mario Land 2, The Six Golden Coins, which I'll cover more deeply when we get to Wario's Sweet. video. Wario and Daisy don't interact at all in that game, but in this manga, he captures her and manipulates her into becoming Wallu Daisy, leg. an evil version of herself that hypnotizes people into serving Wario. She even manages to turn- anatomy class. You take an anatomy class on Mario characters. They don't have genitalia. They're like Ken dolls. Luigi into Waluigi and Peach into Walu Peach. Yeah, this was Waluigi before Waluigi. Okay, wait, one more. In the Super Mario Land 3 Wario Land story of this That's manga, there's this fog children. that plagues they're the Mushroom Kingdom kids. with an there's illness, no Peach included. And while all of this is happening, Daisy is told by Peach that she's her and alter. Where did Rosalina come from? The fucking moon! She's from the stars! She's from the sky! Ego and proceeds to ask her to save the world. Mona? Peach Who's is like, Mona? I would love to sacrifice myself for the good of the world, but I'm sick, so you gotta do it. What? So yeah, Daisy thanks Mario for everything, kisses him goodbye, and sacrifices herself, turning into a bunch of healing spores that spread to stop the poison. Some of the spores turn into small versions of her, but surprisingly, she's dead dead. But it gets worse. In a later issue, Luigi tells one of the Daisy clones that she's just a copy and he was in love with the original. That's when we see Daisy begin to rise from her grave while Luigi pisses himself. The manga ended its run shortly yeah, after this, so we'll probably never get to see how that one ends. But I gotta give this manga some credit because it does give Daisy that whole tomboyish character that she is described to have. And since there aren't that many renditions of her around this time, I would this say this is probably one of the about. earliest depictions. Yeah, what's going her on here, dude? Daisy would also be featured in her very own song from an album called Super Mario Compact Disco. What the? Yo! Exclusive That's my fucking guy right there. That's my dude. Exclusively in Japan Maybe in 1993. So this album is pretty easy to track down now, but it has a ton of I remixes from Mario music from that time and mainly a set of raps by the Ambassadors of Funk, a musical project created by British musician Simon Harris. After playing Super Simon Mario- Simon Why did I think Simon Harris was like, uh, uh, I, I thought Calvin Harris, that's what I, I was like, wait, what? Okay, and on the Game Boy, he was inspired to mix the game's score into something that sounded like house music, since it had a similar tempo. But track 13 is called Save Me With Your Charm, and there's an artist on this particular track that identifies herself as Daisy. Yo, this is Princess Daisy. You're listening to Super Mario Compact. She's British? <laughs> this whole album just feels good. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it's definitely a window oh, yeah, into another time. Just, just, so all my nostalgic 90s come people here, go check this one out. Help. Last but not oh, least is the 1993 Super Mario Bros. as movie. And I'm setting aside a separate video for this, but I have to mention it for the sake of including this version of Daisy <laughs> in this video. Princess Daisy is the catalyst that sets off the Mario Brothers on their journey into an alternate dimension run by King Bro, Koopa, that's peach. played this by Dennis so Hopper. Stupid. We find out that Daisy's character, who is that's played by peach. Samantha Mathis, is the long lost princess of Dino Hatton, her father being sucks. overthrown She's literally and just peach. into a fungus by Koopa. I always thought it was a weird choice that they picked Daisy to be featured in this movie as the princess instead of Peach, but they did form a romance between her and Luigi in this movie, so apparently they got that part right. I'll definitely be coming back to this movie at some point, but I'm also curious if Daisy will have some kind of cameo in the upcoming Super Mario Brazas film. Anywho, that I is the so. origins of the underutilized Princess Daisy. So let me know your thoughts in I the hope comments. She pops Do you up. think she should play a larger role? Uh, that'd be kind of nice. Role in mainline Mario titles, or is Daisy no. fine where she is? As I don't care about Daisy. I shouldn't have watched this video. This is a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, more movies in a second. But I have to do this. One second. 
I may not care about Daisy, but uh, you know what I do care about? Your ah, online whoa, 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 whoa. your online privacy. It's true. Does it make sense that the same company who controls half of online retail also passively eavesdrops on your private conversations at home? What about the idea that a single company controls 90% of internet searches, runs your email service, and gets to track everything you do on your smartphone? Big tech is more powerful than most countries are, and they profit by exploiting your personal data. It's time to put a layer of protection between your online activity and these tech juggernauts, and that's why I use ExpressVPN. Think about how much of your life is on the internet. Sadly, every site you visit, every video you watch, or message you send, that all gets tracked and data mined. But when you run ExpressVPN on your advice, Advice. Device. The software hides your IP address. Something big tech can do use to personally identify you. So ExpressVPN makes your activity harder to trace and sell to advertisers. ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% of your internet data to keep you safe from hackers and eavesdroppers on your network. What I like most about ExpressVPN is how easy it is to use. You just download the app on your phone or computer, tap one button, and then you're protected. And ExpressVPN does all of this without slowing your connection. That's why it's rated the number one VPN service by TechRadar and The Verge. So stop handing over your personal data to the big tech monopoly who mines your activity and sells your information. Protect yourself with the VPN that I trust to keep me safe online. Visit expressvpn.com slash Coney to get three extra months free. That's right, three extra months absolutely free. Thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring the stream. Ah, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, honey, new Super Mario Brother trailer out. Donkey Kong 3 ends Mario with Death Link. Really? I saw this came out and I was like, should I watch this? And people said no. Okay. All right. It's 30 seconds. I bet there's a 15 minute long H box movie. <laughs> All right. Oh, he's a cat. Yeah. Ah, you got the cat box. <laughs> oh my. I'm sorry. Okay. Now you die. Only in theaters April 7th. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be charitable, and you know how movies will sometimes put audio that doesn't match what's happening on top of you know what I mean like I'm trying to think of how to explain it like this the the he got the cat box line probably comes earlier than him kicking his legs and laughing because it doesn't seem like it comes from the same animation ah, you got the cat box <laughs> oh my it seems like a little bit too but we'll see I don't know On the Illumination channel, the trailer is named Smash, so I guess this is a reference to it. All right. Meow. Ah, you got the cat box. Uh, oh my. That's fun, I guess. Look at Mario's pose in each camera angle. <laughs> is this Lanky Kong? I see it in Mario's eyes. Could this suggest or hint to a larger Kong universe? Or perhaps a Kong frontation? Thank you for watching Game Explain. Thank you, bot. Thank you, Acel. Carlito, he's back. <laughs> Swanky Kong is back, baby. All right, I I've got a movie. Uh... <laughs> Now, this one is a little bit more, uh, let's say, esoteric. Um, so, there was a, vi a game that came up during an ad recently uh, called War Thunder, which is a, a shitty mobile game about, like, military ships and planes and stuff. And somebody said that people leaked actual military secrets onto their forums. Like... Stealing military documents. And now I'm curious, multiple times, now I want to know what happened. 
I need to know the answer to this story. It's so, an vehicle based. I'm sorry, it's not a mobile game and it's not shitty. I'm sorry. No, no, it's actually a good game. It's a very good game. No, no. MMO and it's free to play. I'm not playing but that could shit. playing War Thunder have other consequences? War Thunder is ass. True. A recent so true. On the game I agree subreddit with you. Claims that the U.S. government is asking prospective hires at arms manufacturers whether or not they play War <laughs> Thunder. What? Wait, like Northrop Grumman? You have to get interviewed if you play this game, dude. Yeah, it seems that's a fake too story. Crazy okay. to be right, true, right, right. right? There's no that's way it's funny actually itself. real, right? Well, apparently not, says Chad. Oh, Nirat was there. It's real. All right. The muzzle velocity of a Chinese tungsten cord sable round might be a closely guarded state secret. But it's no secret that subscribing to the channel, liking so War Thunder is a game that just can't stay out of the news. That's because the users for this game are so dedicated that when they want to see a balance change, they bring receipts. Most recently, this <laughs> took the form of a leak involving the actual real-life F-16 multi-role fighter aircraft and AIM-120 air-to-air missile. We're talking technical details of both real life military Wait. systems leaked in a public forum by users so this is a game it's like about war and gun and and tanks and ships and shit and they'll they'll actually bring up like documentation to make their shit stronger in the hopes that devs would huh but first let's just briefly explain the game they wanted to be really dude that seems like a great if i was russia i would make a sick uh, large scale war game and I would I would make it like backwards <laughs> I would make like a foot soldier the strongest thing in the game and be like well I I mean he's got a bazooka what is the jet supposed to do it can track him and then and people are like nah -uh, look at all of these highly confidential details for Black Hawk ships like, oh, okay. There is an online vehicle <laughs> well, based well. game where you're able to play <laughs> as vehicles from basically secrets. a whole yeah. century of history. It's genius. And there's a battle tier which sort of limits the top level of vehicles that could be in any one match. Like, if you want to, you can fly a biplane against a jet fighter, but only if you enter a game where you know <laughs> there will be jets based on the battle tier and you choose the biplane. You can do I that? I did play the game a long time ago and it was pretty fun, but I quit like. <laughs> Coney, look at this guy's ceiling. Is he homeless? I didn't notice that. What is going on back here? Is he making content for Jigsaw? Is he in a warehouse somewhere? What the fuck? Oh, yeah. I guess it's just an unfinished basement. It's just funny because I wouldn't have even I wouldn't have even noticed if you didn't say that. I just saw this shit. I'm like, oh, cool, gamer background, bunch of old stuff, persona thing, and then uh, oh wait, the walls are kind of dirty. <laughs> just after they added tanks, I think my favorite thing was what's going on here. Weirder aircraft that they put Yahoo! in the game. But here's the kicker. There aren't other games like War yes, Thunder. A lot of the stuff in game is modeled accurately. Tanks have the correct amount of horsepower. Horse the game power? engine calculates thrust for jets. Everything weighs in game the same it would weigh our let's nerge and I love it. Not really. So the fans here can't just like pack up and go to a competitor because there really aren't other games that are exactly like War Thunder. It's pretty singular, honestly. But what that means is that War Thunder fans are dedicated to improving their game, whatever that takes. That F-16 leak I mentioned happened about a week ago, and they posted some technical manuals that, frankly, they shouldn't have. Were they, strictly speaking, classified? 
No, but this happens so often now that Gaijin Entertainment, the game's developer, pretty much just has to remove these things unless they have clear proof that this information is publicly available. And so in the case of these specific documents, they were apparently still restricted and additionally labeled export controlled How and DOD only, these? as well as distribution authorized to US government agencies. Only. How are people yeah, getting Yeah, I mean, I don't shit? think that the War Thunder forums qualify as a US government agency but this is just the most recent time dad I'm gonna works quickly at the blow government through the other incidents for you right now a few days after the f-16 aim 120 incident i mentioned earlier someone posted over a dozen weapon system manuals for the f-15e strike what eagle fuck? fighter aircraft in July 2021, a user leaked information about the UK's Challenger 2 main battle tank, and the Ministry of Defense confirmed to Gaijin that the documents were not supposed to be public. In October 2021, a former member of the French military shared documents that showed the turret rotation oh, speed no, the, the French Leclerc are getting main battle it? tank as Not well. a French tank! Oh my god. Those are the weakest ones. If I was France, I'd be mad as hell. Uh, my tank is just too weak. Uh, Here's the documents. I could be the prime minister of France. I'm sending them all the documents. I'll win in the game. Well, then the game was not accurate. In Bonjour, June 2022, I'm someone leaked technical specifications for a Chinese armor-piercing sable. Ra Do you think there's a world where you could get propaganda? Like, if you if you if you make fake documents to prove how strong your tank is, could you get like Bolivia to the top of the tier list in this game? You know. Maybe there's something where, like, Bulgaria becomes, like, incredibly strong. Our tank have 400,000 horsepower. Look, book say so. Make my tank stronger. Round the DTC-10 125mm APF SDS. This was information that was classified in China and the Gaijin system itself is very is serious accurate. about verifying their sources. Who are they going to call? The fucking president? What? Actually, pretty interesting. I, I have president. seen evidence that there are other leaks that I haven't been able to confirm, like one involving the Eurocopter Tiger helicopter. Uh, but I'm willing to believe that it happened because... Well, it just keeps happening. So two questions. First off, how dangerous is this behavior? Of course, the country in question, the level of classification, the meta these of all the game. come into yeah. play. But in the case of the challenge- Coney, if you had a direct line to Sakurai, you would call his ass all the time. I really would. I'm trying to keep his chin up. All these people are going to be dogging you about Kazuya, bro. Honestly, you, you snapped at that one. Keep your head up, King. Who is this? <laughs> it would be like 6 a.m. his time. Hey, brother, you're doing great. Challenger 2 main battle tank that I mentioned earlier. Like the UK's Banjo, Ministry though, of the Defense fuck? confirmed, yeah, these aren't supposed to be public, and that under the Official Secrets Act, there would be potentially a 14-year sentence for making them public. Jeez. Secondly, who are these leakers who are just posting sensitive military Joe documents Biden. to a video game's public forum? Well, in some cases, it seems as if they're former military personnel who actually work on these platforms in some way. But at the end of the day, they're posting on a forum where they're using a pseudonym. I'm sure if the developer really wanted to find out your name and you gave it to them, they can. And they might even provide that to a law enforcement agency if they are asked to do so. It doesn't feel like this is some kind of coordinated effort by a small group. Instead, it's people who well, really just like team. War Thunder and oh. will do anything to get the balance changes they want. At the same time, it seems like some of these people thought that the documents they were posting is this just five more minutes of talking to the screen? I, I don't like videos where we talk to the screen. I need some, like, cuts and stuff, you know? <laughs> Zoomer brain? Kind of. Posting were declassified. Listen, bro. Cases, like I, I just said, make the contact right better, you know? <laughs> But Gaijin does have to remove you know what I'm these saying? things without evidence that they are okay. Wait, so they're called Gaijin? Are we sure this isn't a... Uh, a Japanese company <laughs> trying to get one over on us publicly post and in some cases just because they're declassified like with I Japan, said doesn't right? mean they don't Are have some other Japan? kind of restriction <laughs> on their publication it's classified we isn't the be. only thing that people put on documents to be like don't publish this. And all of this is despite the fact that the developer says that the vehicles in the game are based on publicly available information, 
which means that even if you figure out that the muzzle velocity of a Type 99 is wrong, they're not going to use... All right, bro, I've had enough of this. And so has Simply. <laughs> I've been sitting on this Simply video forever. I'm curious. This is Mario 64 speedrunning's weirdest tradition. Are weird. And no, I'm curious. Mario I've been sitting on this movie forever. I'm watching this for me. Mario 64 speedruns are weird. And no, not just because the game is weird. It is. But because the way that we play it is different. You look Do around tell. at any other speedrunning community, like Super Mario Sunshine. Or oh, Ocarina. speaking is simply. Wait a minute. <laughs> Guess what video just came I out I got of 10 channel. of my YouTube. Wait, where is it? It's in his normal videos. Dude, he's got... How do I find his videos? Oh, no. Oh, oh it's the one. It's the one. Yo. We won. Oh, am I not subbed? Oh, what the fuck? I thought I used to be. Maybe I never did. I went on a kick when he was doing those mod hacks and stuff. All right, we're back in there. Have time. And you will find... Didn't even get your name in the title. I didn't even in the last one. I was in the thumbnail, but it said this this streamer thought he could cheat my rate. I'm actually going to ask him. I actually want to see. Oh, my God. Bam. Thanks for the five gifties. Thank you. Thank you. Big ups. I'm actually going to ask him. Uh, I have an idea for the Papa Plot race because Papa Plot is the number one seed of the tournament. I'm not beating Papa Plot. I have something I want to do, but I want to see if he'll do it. <laughs> I want to see if he'll go with me on this. We'll see. I got to hit up Simply and talk to him. Papa will kill you. Yeah, it's not going to be close. You have to practice? No, I don't. Listen, I'm going to go I'm going to go down in the loser's bracket and hopefully I win one more match. Then I'm happy. Find That's that they it. tend to play the play the fastest version available. Even back in the day when Narcissa was going for the any percent world record in Ocarina Damn, of Time, where's Link an going? extremely difficult to obtain console where's was Link the fastest going? version that the game ran on at the time, and the community was perfectly fine what with this. It. This was, of course, huh? the IQ, aka the Chinese N64, and as you can see, the prices and the rarity of it on eBay kind of ridiculous. But anyway, I'm not here to shit on OOT as much as I'd love to. What's weird about Super Mario 64? Well, looking at the leaderboard, you notice all the top players run on Nintendo 64. Now, obviously there are very good okay. players that you will find on the Wii version of the game, people that play on emulator on PC, on the but the top of the top players, the people what? setting world records in the game are using N64. If you don't know already, this... people setting world records- He put himself up there. <laughs> in the game are using N64. As a if top guy, already, come on. The N64 is the slowest version of the game by a lot. In 120 Star, you can save nearly two minutes by playing on a Wii, and you can save about a minute by playing on PC emulator. Bro got a projector? That's crazy. So surely, there must be a reason why these runners are intentionally going slower. Because of the way Mario 64 speedrunners do things, there has been some drama in the past, which Ooh. I will cover because it's a funny story, and I think it's worth talking about, but we'll get to that. Now, before I get into exactly why this is the case, let's just do a quick run through. I just said I didn't like videos where somebody just talks to the camera, and here I am watching Simply talk to the camera. I love Simply. Of the different <laughs> versions that are available to Super I can watch Mario him talk forever. You have on N64, the Japanese fit. version of the game, the English version of the game. You have the European PAL version ass, of, yeah, well, of the game, which is complete we dog shit. Simply. Runs at 25 frames per second. It is literally a meme category to run it. You might think I'm kidding, or you might think I'm like exaggerating, but this this version of the game is literally ass. I feel so bad for the European kids who Prince had to play lose this. again. The 70 star <laughs> world record holder D whatever can do 70 star in 47 minutes, Europe and he got the world record again. on the PAL version. Guess what time it was? What was Barely it? a sub ah! hour. He got a 59. <laughs> The world record is an hour. I actually want to play the PAL version. How much is the PAL version? Could I sh is is the Nintendo 64 region locked? It is, right? <laughs> I'm kind of curious. 958. 12. What's the 60? I got to see a 16 star Man, it's that. lost. It's literally in slow motion. It's a joke. But anyway, you know, back on topic. You have the updated Japanese Shindu version of the game, which patches BLJs has really weird pole grabs that make me uncomfortable, and slower yeah. load times. Beyond that, looking at the emulators, you have the Wii <laughs> Virtual Console, you have the Wii U, 
You have the Switch. That was on the Wii U. And you have, bro. obviously, PC emulator, you know, Project 64, etc., etc. Now, no one really cares about the Wii U because, Jesus Christ, that thing is a piece of shit. Can we all agree? The Wii U, imagine having to run on a Wii U. Who even has one anymore? Ew. What? The Switch version. I played it. I made a video on it. That was the only reason that I played it. It was terrible. It has the Shindu version. BLJs are patched. It was a clickbait video, and that was it. It feels like shit. Somehow, the Switch is slower at loading than the Wii. Why would you patch out BLJs? That's so weird. And I know it's like, LOL Nintendo moment. But why care? Right? Isn't that extra work? Because it's a bug? But, I guess so. But... They added Rumble? Mario 64 with Rumble sounds weird. Oh. They didn't patch Sunshine Skips, which is weird. Well, was there like a newer... Like, if the new Switch games are just emulations, right? Is that how it is? Like, is it one of those things where like the newest ROM had that patch out and they just switched it over? Okay, the patch version already existed. Got it. Okay, that makes more sense. I don't know how, I don't know yeah. why, but it is. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So that yeah. kind of okay. just leaves us with the PC emulator and the Wii Virtual Console emulator. And like I said earlier, the Wii is very fast. It saves nearly two minutes in 120 star and saves a very noticeable amount of time in the other categories. It's a so wizard. why not just use the Virtual Console <laughs> Wii version for s Maybe try to speedruns. pretend. I mean, I could boot it up right now and get a world record for free. Save three minutes? I could make so many mistakes and still beat the world record. But I won't. You see, back in the day, you know, when I was just a wee lad playing League of Legends and I didn't even know what Mario 64 speedrunning was, oh, no, Japanese players were running shit. They were popping off. Oh, no. They had mostly been at the top he's of the leaderboards. Again. And back in the day, it was pretty difficult for Japanese runners to get their hands on an English Wii. Because the Japanese version of the game on Wii was the Shindu version. So, no what Japanese players were going to play a Mario 64 speedrun with BLJ's patched. But what's it, not is it just, so is just they BLJ's N64. out? That's Western it? runners, however, had it very easy. Most people had a Wii on their no hands. BLJ All you needed Rumble. to get That's, was okay. the Wii shop, download Mario 64, and you could start speedrunning it. Just and you would be on the English yeah, but version I wasn't of the listening. game on Wii, I was talking which to you. doesn't have BLJ's patched. So, most Western runners use this. Eventually, out of those Western runners, Siglemic, a name that... You may have heard, you may have not. I have heard He's that the name. reason that I even play this game. He rose to the top of the leaderboards of 70 star and 120 star and realized that the Wii was much faster than the Japanese N64 version. And so, in order to compete on even ground and really see how good he is, is at the game. a really weird pull grab animation in Shindu. Is that the one where he spins around? He showed that. He switched and I was like, to N64. Huh? Now, huge shout outs to Gothic Logic for giving me this information. About 11 years ago, <laughs> a huge grew. shout and really See did his hair grow he or this it <laughs> well, how far apart were, were these videos filmed a huge shout out to gothic <laughs> logic for giving the game it's like a he month later 11 years <laughs> now, huge <laughs> shout and really see <laughs> see how good he is for giving me this information about 11 he definitely filmed the first part and he sat on it for like a month like i don't want to edit this i don't want to put this i don't want to send this out 11 oh. years ago in a YouTube comment section, I'm sure it's just like Honey. Honey was one of the best Japanese one of them players is like at after the time. A or something. And Siglemic commented, That's really "I like it. Please do more 120." To which Honey replied, "I want to, but on N64, it is too difficult to beat you." And Siglemic replied, "Yes. VC is unfair to the Japanese players. I will play N64 Japanese now." Isn't that just a wholesome moment? Neat. Doesn't that just butter up your biscuit and make you want to cry all over it? It does. Doesn't do it make all you just that. want to cry? I'm, Tears I'm, of joy. I'm close, yeah. God, it's so wholesome. A lot of the rest of the community followed suit, and most runners who were able to get a world record would be on N64. It didn't really seem worth it. Obviously, you had to buy the N64, buy the capture card, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So for some people, they would stay on emulator. Me, for example, I started on emulator. I played on it for over a year before switching to N64. My very first paycheck I got from my first real- These are two different people. <laughs> this simply is about to come out of the screen. I think one of these guys is- One of these guys is a projection of my mind and is going to reach through the screen and rip out my eyeballs. Something bad is about to happen to me. Real job. 
lifeguard in. I blew it on this is N64, like a This is like a, uh, a poltergeist and in my computer. Became, Which one is real? It became the thing. People were on N64 because the better players were on N64. <laughs> now, aside from being a slower version of the game, the N64 does have some differences that put it above the me. Wii version of the game. At, at least wear the same shirt. Dude, you guys wouldn't believe how many times this has happened before. I've done a sponsor thing. And they've said they wanted more edits. I have to wear a shirt from like four days ago and put it on and pretend like I'm doing it in the same shoot. <laughs> That's happened a lot on the YouTube. I have to like dig through my laundry and be like, oh my god, where the fuck is that shirt? It's it, usually what we'll do. Actually, this happened with the, uh, this isn't a joke. So the Star Trek thing goes out tomorrow. And so it's a Star Trek uh, sponsor for YouTube. And... Uh, I said, I was like, dude, I'm definitely going to say Star Wars once. And then I did. <laughs> and uh, my the editor was like, Tommy was like, hey, you said Star Wars. You need to refilm this. And I was like, fuck, I knew that I would. And I was like, wait, can I just give you the audio? No no picture? He's like, yeah, that's fine. So I just... <laughs> So I, I, just, I, I literally just turned on OBS and I just kept the stream off and I just talked. And he just used gameplay B-roll. He saved me. That can't always happen, though. That does not always happen. Sometimes it's got to... It was a dub. It was a dub. No, it's not over me talking. They show the gameplay. It's not It's not like my mouth says wars and the audio says Trek. It wasn't ADR. It was like he puts a B-roll in. But that would be very funny. <laughs> How about the Chiefs? On the Wii, you can sometimes experience lag. This isn't lag from the game running, it's just Wii lag. It just happens, sometimes the game just freezes. It's really stupid, but it does happen, and it can kill runs. It also does not take inputs in as precisely as the N64 does. The dead Did zone the Chiefs win? Dude, I was thinking they were making an... Uh, this is going to sound so stupid. Their name was Falcon, so I thought it was, a, it was a football Atlanta Falcons joke from The Simpsons, from the Super Bowl episode, and then I realized... That's not what they're doing, which is why I was like, oh, that person's talking about actual football Chiefs. <laughs> My brain connected Chiefs football Falcon ADR joke in the Simpsons, Atlanta Falcons. You know what I'm talking? My brain like went down five different paths, and that's why I was like, oh, that's not what they're doing. <laughs> is worse on the Wii, and because there's connected, no lag, like, five different pathways. because the Wii is so my favorite bussin', team there's being... no lag reduction. Atlanta that breaks Falcons. my heart. I made a whole video dedicated to lag reduction. I've made multiple videos talking Broncos. about lag reductions in N64. <laughs> also, it's washed out as shit. I mean, look at the HUD. The HUD looks bad. The colors, bad. Yeah, that's The Wii ugly. shop isn't even open anymore. If you want to play on the English Wii version of the game, you need to homebrew your Wii, which isn't a big deal and there's plenty of communities who are perfectly willing to do this as a standard but it's just kind of a pain another part that people don't talk about as much which influenced japanese players oh, to no, play on n64 is Ooh. from the years 2009 2011 a lot of japanese players actually did i feel like this simply just woke up he seems he seems more like i i don't know maybe he's sad is this, it was he sad? It's the hair? It might be the hair. Play on emulator. It was the most common version that people played on. However, there was a Freshly huge problem hair, maybe, with yeah. cheating going on during this era. Cheating? The community Ooh. has looked back on some runs set in How 2009 to 2011. Two that we, and know, we know of. Now that maybe the editor is another simply. level emulator runs in that time frame were either cheated or <laughs> under heavy justified 40 suspicion. Suspicious and runs? so this also caused a big push for Japanese players to move to N64, where although you can still cheat, you can still splice, it's um, quite a bit harder to, to do. But the biggest thing at this point, you know, fast forward oh, to no, no. Now. now. he's taking the other Simply Thunder. Too. Get out of the way, black Wii's shirt Simply, I'm coming emulators, in. <laughs> especially in Japan, why aren't we using it? Why are runners still playing on the slowest <laughs> version? Well, I think the biggest thing is it's it's kind of just been tradition. It's weird to... Well, he's, weird uh, to I saw the projector too. You think he's projecting himself? This is a this is a holographic simply. <laughs> this is a projection.
Although you can still cheat, you can still point. You know, fast forward <laughs> to now. We are in 2022. Dr. Easy Wiley access shit. to Wii's or PC emulators, especially in Japan. Why aren't we using it? Why are runners <laughs> still playing on the slowest version? Well, I think the biggest thing is it's it's kind of just been tradition. It's weird to forget all of this work that's been done on the N64 version of the game. And the only thing I can think of to compare it to is in Super Smash Brothers Melee, Boo! there's a technique called L canceling. Some people think L canceling stupid and dumb, probably because they can't do it. Other people very much enjoy L canceling. I am an L canceling <laughs> enjoyer, personally, because it adds depth to the game. It, it gives you more Fun chances canceling. to fuck up. There's things like that in games that I don't like, but in the case of L canceling, in the case <laughs> of leg reductions, I think it is a technique and a skill that is just as important as anything else in the game and it sets other runners apart from other runners. It How do we feel about L canceling, chat? What is our feeling? You know, I used to hate it, but then when I played PM, I was like, I get it now. When I when I played PM, I was like, ah. I kind of understand. It's like dribbling in basketball. That's always the uh, the analogy people use. It's probably similar to the way that I feel about like edge hogging and in like uh, edge guarding. I don't care about L canceling one way or the other, but I love the old ledge system. But I understand why people don't like it, and I understand why people don't want L canceling. But you know, it's a way for you to gain an advantage over other runners if you're willing to put the work in. That does not exist on Wii. That does not exist on Emulate. All that aside, the fact that even nowadays you can use advanced <clears throat> practice ROMs on an N64 console, I don't think it'll ever change. I think, you know, personally, it just feels good to play on the original hardware. No knock on anyone that doesn't. Um, it does. I think it feels you know, nice. It's actually a good it's direction good. for the community because when I first came into Mario, it was kind of toxic. There was elitism. People would kind of bully people for playing on uh, Wii or playing on emulator. <laughs> and I think nowadays really? the community is more accepting. There's great players on all platforms. However, whenever That's a, a player weird, starts to approach that territory towards being capable of a world record, they just make the switch. Even though they could potentially just take the world record with a different version, most runners don't do this. This did happen at one point though. So get ah. your popcorn ready, get your chips out, get your tits out. Back in August of 2013, there was a very good speedrunner named Hyacin, who speed ran on the Wii Virtual Console version of the game. I don't think he really was trying to start anything. I think he this just is wanted what I to play on the, the Wii fun. Virtual Console version of the game. And again, like I said, there was elitism back in the time. So he definitely, you know, people did shit on him for continuing to play on Wii VC, even though he was capable of beating the actual world Tony, record I'm going to get my tits out. Listen, you can do whatever you want. Privacy in your own home. Just don't he do finally it beat chat, it. Okay? He got the first 143 in 120 star ever. And it was on Wii. A lot of people were upset. People were mad because this wasn't the real world record. It was on Wii. Didn't people know? He was saving three minutes. This was more like a 146. How big is the Mario 64 speedrunning community at large? Like, big? Really? Massive? Really? I don't mean, like, casual viewers or, like, you know, uh, simply fans or, like, whatever. Like, what's the... It's the biggest speedrunning community. Yeah, but how big are we talking? In speedrunning terms, huge. Yeah, but speedrunning's super small. It's like five times the size of every other community other than the Minecraft. Yeah, but relatively, like, uh, how how large is the biggest? Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, Discord of 20k people. 20k? Active? I guess that doesn't matter. Jesus Christ. Good Lord. Okay. Damn, and I was top 1,000 in my category. <laughs> I'm pretty good. On N64. And Siglemic actually had a Wii still Thank set you, up. Linus. Because he used to run on the Wii version of the game. Hyacin got this 143.37 on August 18th, 2013. Can you guess what happened on August 19th of 2013? What that happened? That day, Siglemic 
became petty. Siglemic made an alternate account called Based Earn God 333221. Uh -huh. Now, if you don't know about the dank memes back then, the, the only real meme that I can remember from back then is Tet Earn which just saying oh it God. makes me cringe. But just to give you context, oh based God. earn God basically just means based. I mean, I don't, I don't know why I'm explaining this. It doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> Either way, he made this, this silly name account uh, with this cool timer layout, uh, inverted colors on his SM64, playing music the entire time, and he beat the world record that Hyacin had set the next day with a uh, 143.22. Okay. Nowadays on speedrun.com, all of the leaderboards are separated, and so you would have virtual console world record, emulator world record and n64 world record however back in the day it was all on one leaderboard oh so yuck. that's kind of why this happened okay, and this was yeah. the last time that this happened I, I don't think this ever happened again because it was just kind of uh kind of funny kind of silly and i think runners realize that okay if you want to get a world record you're gonna probably have to get it on n64 and if you get it on wii then whoever has it on n64 it's probably gonna come clap your ass shortly after. So basically, we play the slowest version because it's harder. Now that I say that out loud, it makes like even less sense. But yes, we are intentionally making things harder for ourselves because it's fun. And the game is good and fun that and fair. Sense. Remember that, always. Bye. Neat. I was gonna say, whenever I uh, move my camera to the side, to do the uh, to do the 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 submarine trick where you load in less stuff, I always feel like a technical god because my fingers have to like go over. <laughs> I have to like I have to like claw grip it, and like eh, I have to turn it a little bit. I always feel very strong when that happens. Uh <laughs> I have a movie here that I don't think I'm gonna watch tonight. I want to get a heat check. How do you guys feel? Do I watch this in my own time? So, I've seen a couple videos about this game, but I don't know the whole story uh, told, like, overall. It's always kind of evaded me. Um, What the fuck is up with Overwatch? Like, what what happened to that game? And I think I'm going to watch this on my own. Don't watch this. It's very sad. <laughs> I'll watch it on my own then. Okay. I always wonder what happened to this fucking game. Because, like, it was on top of the world. Everybody played this shit. Millions of dollars. And then everybody's like, actually, it's boring. And then people start talking about goats. Like, what the fuck are goats? What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know what that is. By the way, I hate to do this. Ads in 20 seconds. I know. I know. But hey, we haven't had them for an hour. Ads are in 20 seconds, and I'm not hitting that snooze. I haven't said this one time tonight. If you guys have a Prime, go ahead and drop it below the stream. It's a free thing to do if you have a Prime. Do it fast. Or $5 with a Tier 1. It's so easy to do. I don't even hate to do it that much. Run the ads. Twitch. Take it away. I wish I knew exactly when it would pop so I could, like, go into it. Take it away. Twitch. Go to the ads. Thank you, Zygus. Thank you, Dot Matrix Leviathan. Thank you, JKV. JKV? JKV, thank you. <laughs> <coughs> I have two movies, and this is the last movie of the night. Uh, you want to red pill it or blue pill it? I kind of want to red pill or blue pill. All right, let's play red pill, blue pill. Uh, how do I do this? Is it these two? Ah, here we go. Okay, now I have to... Okay. So I'm going to do this, and I have to get it set up. All right. Red pill or blue pill? I think these are both movies that I want to see. And I'm sure we'll watch both at some point. But there's only one more tonight. All right, hold on. 
Red pill. Oh my god, I have to do. I have to like bring it all the way down. Okay. I didn't do this the right way last time. Or I didn't do this the right way this time. Whatever, it's fine. Okay. All right. Do I pull it or do we do click maps, you think? I think we'd pull it, yeah, because a lot of people are watching on mobile. Okay. Ready? Red pill or blue pill? Go. I'll do it. Pick one. Channel points now available in polls. What? Oh, I see. Gonna make this one minute long. Also, you guys want to play Crocodile Dentist? I kind of want to give some points away. <laughs> Who wants points? <laughs> points, 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 points. What is this for? I have two more movies. You're picking one of them. Red pill or blue pill? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Blue Pill's winning out by a lot. Guys, remember, you did Blue Pill last time and you regretted it. I'm telling you. Red Pill was... It, you guys regretted that last time. Blue Pill got picked and people were so sad about it. Blue Pill is good pill in the movie. <laughs> well, it might not be good here. I can't believe Blue Pill keeps winning. Did you guys see the movie? Have some courage. All right, well, here's what you could have had. You could have had... This is the red pill. These are the dumbest rules in baseball. <laughs> could have been baseball posting. You could have had the baseball movie. You are real close. Don't worry, we'll watch it another time. Instead, what you got... And it's a little bit less uh, less exciting in that way, but maybe interesting. <laughs> I feel like people are going to be really mad now because they could have had baseball. This is what video games are like for someone who doesn't play video games. <laughs> hey, you picked the blue pill. That's what you got. I don't know what to tell you. We're going to watch it in a second. First, let's crocodile dentist. Hold on. <laughs> uh... Hold on. Uh, but, but, uh, prediction? Prediction. That's what it is. Start prediction. Which tooth? Even odd. Okay. I should do odd or even. Whoops. All right, prediction's going up. If you don't know what it is, there's a prediction of this. Is the tooth that closes his mouth going to be on an odd number or an even number? Okay, so it's odd, even. Odd, it was odd. Odds win. Okay? Now, I think it's been odd like four times in a row now. The odd Todds have been dominating, but the even Stevens will have their day. Odd, even. Odd, even. Odd, even. Odd, even. Even won that time. See? All right, those don't count. Those are practice rounds. <laughs> Those are just practices. Evens were due for one, and now you got it, which is kind of scary. Okay. Look at this. All right. Look at, oh, what's that? Oh. Now I think baseball <laughs> one, actually. Oh, really? You think baseball won, huh? I mean... No, I think baseball won, actually. Hey, you got to abide by the rules of the poll, honestly. I mean... Might be able to switch it up for, like, I don't know... 35.90? Maybe? I mean, that would help us to hit our goal. Right? No, I don't have money. Oh, don't worry, Compton. I don't expect you to make it up. What I expect is for your people to use their primes which is a free way to subscribe to the stream. And it's so easy. You just go below the stream, and you just subscribe for free with Prime. That's all. 
It's so easy to do. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Shattuck Zero. Oh, that's five. Okay. Shattuck is here? Oh, well, then it's got to be uh, 3,700, actually. 3,700. 3, is that... <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jabba. Thank you, Shattuck. That's 10. All right, maybe baseball one. All right, maybe a cheeky bit of baseball. All right, here we go. Prediction is up. Damn, a lot of even Stevens tonight. Look at this. Look at all the even Stevens. Thank you, Holy Joey. Look at all the even Stevens. All right, here we go. Good luck, everybody. Odd, even. Got it. Evens have it. There you go. Congratulations. That was a short one. That was a quick one. Pay out to the evens. Evens win again. <laughs> There's one, one more. One more, right? Definitely one more. Let people get their their money back. All right, one more, one more, one more. All right, one more, one more. <laughs> I love these. It's so stupid. But I love the Cody Casino. All right, remember. Even or odd, okay? Odd, even. Odd, even. That was odd. See? I am going to watch this game video. Maybe not tonight, but at some point, I'm going to fucking watch this. <laughs> it's been on stream like three times, and it, it keeps getting donut walled. Apparently, it's a good movie. I heard it was a good movie. It's interesting. It sucks. <laughs> Come on. Be nice. People just love baseball, bro. People be baseballing, you feel me? I also have this movie, which has been sitting in my... Somebody it's, it's submitted in the Discord. Uh, this is the story of Japan's most hated woman. Kick the victim's entryway gate. Constantly ring their doorbell. What? Why is she... And worst of all... Place multiple alarm clocks and a radio cassette player in an open window at the closest possible point to the victim's house, just meters away, and blast R&B and hip-hop music 24 hours of the day, every day, for you. Now, I don't know why she's doing that. I don't know why this woman is acting this way, or why all of Japan knows about her or hates her. What's her fucking problem? Well, we'll find out one day when we actually watch that video, but tonight's not that night. All right, here we go. Let's get it. All right. Damn, people going odd on this one. A lot of odd Todds in the house. Odd Todds against Even Stevens. Got 210K from Jerry. And 250K from Pax. All right. Good luck, everybody. I'll start from this side. Odd. <laughs> that would have been a lot more fun if I started on the other side. Because I would have gone all the way around. Damn. All right, we're locked in. Well done, everybody. I hope you won some points. If you didn't, you should have bet better. Sorry, Can happen everybody. to players of all skill levels, but given her lack of stop, 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 stop. Where's the baseball better. video? But Let's go! All right, I found, it. I, found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. All right, here we go. Baseball it is. And remember, you chose this. Fellas, we watched a movie about mascots. We've seen movies about cheating. We love baseball and how it doesn't exist from the channel Baseball Doesn't Exist. And now these are the dumbest rules in baseball. What are those baseballers up to this time? Let's find out, shall we? Did you know that you won't be suspended if you throw a broken bat at a batter? But Wait, what? You drink, you won't Couldn't that kill someone? If you throw a broken bat at a batter. Dude, that shit's sharp. But if you drink too much milk before a game, you will be. You don't <laughs> technically have to touch home in order to score a run. You're allowed to steal first base. But for some reason, what? dwarfs are banned from Major League Baseball. Baseball has a ton of ridiculous rules, but one oh of them stands gosh, out as Fort the Knight? dumbest of Fort them all. A you lot of them emote? are less what? dumb, yet still confusing. You can't emote? Like oh, he wore that, that shit says sideways. If an umpire gets nailed by oh. a live ball, the game the is play over. continues like nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> nice play. Spin around the ball. 
According to the Wait, rules, if the umpire gets hit, they keep playing? Base runners could be running around the bases right now. But if an umpire is hit by a ball before it passes an infielder, the play is dead. This is what <laughs> happened in 2014 when Angel Hernandez was the I think that's just the umpire gets to make the decision. Play is nope. dead. Everybody, stop. You're out. <laughs> How dare you strike me? I feel like this guy, he just made the call on his own. I don't think they have rules for this. Bro just made it up. This is what happened in 2014 <laughs> when Angel Hernandez was nailed by a line drive. The fans hated Angel Hernandez so much, they started cheering. Bryce Harper would have easily made it to third, but since Angel Hernandez Whoa. got hit in the infield grass, the play stopped. Why do we hate umpires? Why is he standing there? Why do umpires stand there? What is he looking for? Costing the Nationals a potential run. But if the ball hits an umpire after it's been fielded or passed by an infielder, the play goes on as normal. Protected. This usually results in balls being kept on the infield instead of going to the outfield Ouch. because umpires were either out of position or just couldn't right, get out of dude, the way quick enough. That dude hit it on always purpose. Ooh, ow. Offense Holy shit. Big time. Like in the 2017 World Series, with a winning run on second base, the Astros tried a pickoff move that would have put the winning runner on third. But it hit the umpire. Oh. Instead, the runner had to stay at second. The Dodgers fly <laughs> out and ended up losing the game. This rule can lead to some unfortunate Whoa. outcomes for teams and umpires who Whoa. have to continue umping. Is while this just an umpire video? What the fuck? Oh circumstances, who have to continue what umping happened to that while guy? Immense oh, he just got hit in the leg. Amounts of Come pain. on. But in most circumstances, the rule that, is generally ooh, fair. Ooh. But the rule that states that pitchers aren't allowed to pitch with tattoos not so much yes as a pitcher you can technically be punished for having tattoos justin miller Ooh. found this out the hard way there's gotta he be a reason was covered in grease his teammate Maybe? billy koch once dared him like a, to get a tattoo what the fuck he's got the christian sunnies Dude, that's i love those i love billy koch and he got the tattoo on his butt Billy Koch paid him and his wife $1,500 as a reward for getting the tattoo. Pitchers are not allowed to wear anything on their arms that are distracting to hitters. So if a team complains that a pitcher's oh. tattoos are distracting them, an umpire is able to force that pitcher to wear long sleeves. I would def be doing that, bro. I can't see your tattoo is too beautiful. That tattoo is gorgeous. Where did you get it done? Look at the ink work on that. If I think a dude is about to strike me out, Oh my God, gorgeous tat, beautiful ink, brother. Amazing, and so meaningful too, you know? It really means, you can tell it's from the heart. I think you really connected with that artist. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and get that covered up so I can bet, huh? <laughs> That's exactly what happened to Justin Miller in 2004, oh who was told by the league that he would have to pitch in long sleeves after a team he faced in spring training complained You're reading that his, his tattoos, his tattoos were from them. the mound. And for the rest of his career, because of his tattoos, Justin Miller had to pitch with long sleeves. As crazy That's as this funny. is, MLB's off-the-field uniform policy can be a lot crazier huh? because according to MLB, players are prohibited from dressing up as women, which was a practice that was not only extremely common, but also may have saved a player's life. But before we get to that, a word from today's sponsor. No, no, get to that. Your day night scoop. Is get no, no, get, get to that. And in 2016... MLB teams have been hazing rookies for decades, and in 2016, they finally went too far, forcing MLB to step in. Teams have routinely stolen players' clothes, sometimes destroying them, <laughs> then forcing rookies to dress up with kids' clothes, stupid costumes, they, and most They forced the rookies to wear the DK backpack? It's not too bad. What are they even keeping in those? <laughs> Bubble gum, I guess? Rookies to I, I would be embarrassed to be the Yoshi or the Patrick. If if I had to beat the other guys up to get the DK, I'd do it. Dress up with I'm kids' DK. clothes, stupid costumes, and most commonly, women. And in one with kids' clothes, stupid. Bro's the penguin. He looks normal. <laughs> like if I saw this guy outside of the context of Batman, Robin, Catwoman, and the Riddler, I'd be like, oh, that guy's overdressed. 
That guy kind of overdressed for a baseball game, but whatever. That's okay. He's the owner of the team. I think he owns the stadium. Ah, okay. That guy must own the stadium. Got it. Okay. Everybody else is different. Costumes, and most commonly, women. And in one instance, it actually might have saved a player's life. In 2004, a man randomly shot a bullet into the Cleveland Indians team bus and hit rookie Kyle Denny in the leg while he was dressed up as a cheerleader. What? Fortunately, Denny turned out to be fine because according to the team doctor, the thick leather cheerleading boots he had to wear for hazing decreased the bullet impact tremendously. What? Thanks to the boots, it only caused a minor flesh wound. Unfortunately, after the bullet wound, he never pitched an MLB again. If this would have happened today, things might have ended differently because in 2016, Dude. MLB implemented a new policy that prohibits requiring, coercing, or encouraging players I... from dressing up as women or wearing any other costume that could be seen as offensive. What kills me about this is like, it's clearly, you know, they're not trying to, to, to set it up this way, but it seems like the YouTuber is like, it, 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 that practice that saved that kid's life is now outlawed. I think they should be dressed up as women all the time. As random Save as more this lives. rule sounds, it might not be as outlandish as right, that this outfit rule, isn't which only anybody. became a rule in 2008 after one of the most bizarre events in baseball history. From the beginning of time, pitchers had two options, either pitch with their left hand or pitch with their right hand, uh -huh. until Pat Vendetti came along. He could throw 85 no miles per hour with his right arm, take off his six-fingered glove, put it on his other hand, and throw 83 miles per hour with his left arm. What the fuck? That's an alien. Send him back to his planet. He was Who can the do only that? ambidextrous pitcher in MLB history. And in his first professional Ever? game, he faced a switch hitter. He came up to the plate to Holy bat righty. Shit. Vendetti switched his glove to pitch righty. The batter then responded by going to the <laughs> other box to bat lefty. Oh Vendetti then switched his glove again to pitch lefty. These are like two vampires from like 3,000 years ago. These guys are have been dueling since time immemorial. These are two ancient spirits at war. <laughs> this is law and chaos at once. So the hitter decided to switch again <laughs> swap to it bat up, swap righty. It up. Vendetti then switched his glove again to pitch righty, causing the batter to step out of the box and hit lefty. Bro, hit him with Finally, the, the umpires stopped the game. But <laughs> they quickly realized, since this was the first switch pitcher appearance That's in the crazy. history of professional baseball, there was no rule preventing the two from switching lefty to righty for eternity. So the umps just made the batter hit righty. A couple weeks later, MLB I'd made a new hell. rule that stated a pitcher had to pick what arm they were going to pitch with That's before crazy. the at-bat and pitch with that same arm until the at-bat ended. Honestly, though, I, I guess you would punish the batter more than the pitcher because the being able to pitch like that is a crazy skill. Being able to bat like that is a big deal, but not as big, I think. I think pitching is harder, right? Unless that arm got injured, in that case, they could switch. This would continue to confuse batters throughout Vendetti's career, including Adrian Beltre, who put his helmet on the wrong side of his head to pretend <laughs> to bat lefty as soon as he saw <laughs> Vendetti decide to pitch righty. And believe it or not, MLB what? rules actually allow this. But he's allowed to try to trick him by putting his hat the other way? In the old days, batters used to wear helmets like this until 1983 in the ear, when right? MLB started requiring players to wear an ear flap. Yeah, that would this hurt. adds protection for when a pitch comes at a batter's head. Sure. But since only one batter's ear is facing the pitcher when batting, MLB players ah. are only required to wear one ear flap. Here's the weird part. There's no rule saying which ear the flap has to be on. <laughs> Meaning, even though MLB forces players to wear an ear flap for protection, they you? allow players to wear that ear flap on the wrong side of their head, which adds zero protection. Would you, Rafael Fercal did this in 2012. Like, Yasmani Grandal got a single while doing this in 2015. Why would you Carlos do that? Carlos Beltran did it while hitting his 100th home run, and nobody stopped 
any of them from doing this. What? And if a batter wants to put his helmet on backwards, that is also <laughs> fine. After Randy Johnson threw a fastball over Larry Walker's head, scaring him to death, he did this in the 1997 All-Star Game, <laughs> and nobody stopped him. Because surprisingly, backward helmets are not banned in baseball. That's cool but as hell, bro. I put my helmet backwards. That's cool as shit. I'm trying to look like that. There are a ton of surprising things. Why not just have two ear flaps? I mean, like, yeah, it's like you don't get protection, but they're going to wear it the other way anyway. That are banned uh, throughout the game. Huh? For example, Fortnite. Yes, in 2018, Fortnite was taking the world by storm and baseball players were addicted. This became a massive problem in multiple major league clubhouses. In Philadelphia, Carlos Santana went into the clubhouse and smashed a TV because players were using it to play Fortnite in the middle of a game. No way. Ex Phillies first baseman Carlos Santana took a bat to the clubhouse. That's crazy. Dude, I told you Fortnite is is only the harbinger of what truly awaits us. Like, Fortnite has gotta be one of the most addicting things on the planet, and it is only the first. Obviously, League is that too. You know, Final Fantasy 14. There's a bunch of games. But there will be another Fortnite that is stronger. They are going to refine it into sky blue. There is going to be a game that is so addicting. It's going to... It, 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 the, the moment you play it for the first time. is going to be a disaster. I'm telling you. Fortnite isn't even that addicting. Yes, it is. That battle pass? Oh... <laughs> God. In Toronto, the blue. Oh, I said sky blue. I meant blue sky. Damn it. Jays made a gaming. You know what I mean. Curfew that forbid players from playing <laughs> a few hours before the game. In Texas, you can't play for Can you play other put games? In a place that banned all video games during work hours. But no clubhouse had a bigger issue with Fortnite than the Boston Red Sox. They installed. Ah, yeah, a wicked Fortnite. Inside their lockers. Gotta get so on that Fortnite. Play in the club. Come on, where are we dropping? Honey, how do you expect the what games are like to a non-gamer video to ever get picked when you put it up against heat like this? Well, I, it was, it did get picked, actually. You guys picked the blue pill. And yet we're still here. Because I, because I got money. <laughs> By the way, and, I, and, and listen, you know I don't like to do this. You know I don't like to do this, but we just, we're, we're four away from 3,600. I don't know if you've seen. And only one away from the goal. And with your Prime sub, which you could drop on this channel right now for free, absolutely free, you could drop it right now for free, right now for free, on this channel, we could hit 3,600. Don't know, I don't think so. <laughs> yes, you could. You could do that. For cost, no, for free, actually. You could drop it right now for free on this channel. Or, if you don't have the Prime, it's only five bucks a month. It's so easy to do. Consider it. Clubhouse. The team was doing Fortnite dances in the field. Oh, they no. visited Microsoft to play the game with a professional setup, and pitcher <laughs> David Price admitted the team regularly stayed up until 2 a.m. playing the game on road trips. Oh, my God. God, dude. At first, this wasn't a problem. But later that year, David Price had to miss time with carpal tunnel syndrome. Oh my God. This led to wide speculation that Fortnite was to blame. Price is adamant well, Fortnite I mean... had nothing to do with it, but promised he would tone down his gaming. Could... Then, in 20... He will, I will never stop gaming. You'll never stop me. When the next Smash has a battle pass, good. Dude, I love battle passes, unironically. That shit in multiverses was fun. 2019, the Red Sox were I love terrible, that shit. That and it shit seems up. like the players' Fortnite addictions were becoming a distraction. Terrible. Wait, and it's the team did this bad because of Fortnite. Seems like the players' Fortnite addictions were becoming a distraction, God. stirring up reports that Fortnite had been banned by the Boston Red Sox. David Price later said the game wasn't necessarily banned, 
but admitted the Red Sox were no longer playing in the clubhouse. <laughs> Even though MLB has yet to ban Fortnite well, league-wide, it play is that banned shit. by certain teams Absolutely. who all have the power what? to make their own team-specific Oh, never mind. Rules. Okay. For example, the Red Sox have a team rule that says you can't like pictures of women on Instagram during games. Pablo Sandoval found this out the hard way after Bro, Jared Carabas exposed him for liking a woman's picture on Instagram while taking a bathroom break in the middle of a game. Bro, I hate that shit. When people, I'll be on commentary, like during an event, and we'll be on break, and people like, like, oh, Cody, you're not doing your job. I get DMs and shit. Even though oh, MLB that. bans phones no, on the field phone or in his... the dugout, there is no rule that forbids them from using them in the clubhouse. He was still suspended one game. <laughs> the White Sox have a rule that says that you can't tweet in the middle of a game. Ozzy well, Guillen ran into this Smash issue after he lost his mind after this call in a game against the Yankees. After screaming at the umpire oh, no. for over a minute, he phone. was ejected, went into the clubhouse, oh, no. and started dissing the umpire on Twitter <laughs> while the game was still happening. There is no official MLB rule oh, that no. specifically says you can't do this but the White Sox suspended him two games. The Marlins even have a rule that says that Bat Boys aren't allowed to do the gallon milk challenge in the clubhouse before a game. Bro, what the fuck is going on across our great nation? In Boston, they're playing Fortnite. In Miami, they're chugging milk gallons. What the fuck is going on? This is like the end times. <laughs> Nowhere is safe. That was established Bro, I did that. It's not hard. The milk challenge? Are you kidding? Doesn't it, like, change the pH level of your stomach? That's so much milk. You're going to throw up. After pitcher Brad Penny offered a bap to it now. No! It's 11 p.m. Boy, $500 <laughs> if he could drink a gallon of milk in an hour without gulping. throwing up. The Bat Boy couldn't beat the challenge oh! and apparently made a huge mess in the clubhouse, causing the Marlins to oh! suspend him six games for doing the gallon milk challenge. These rules are ridiculous, but no, I'm not they gonna do, do the make gallon sense challenge. and don't really affect the game. Can I do a gallon of water? I feel like a gallon of anything is hard. Thank you, old newspapers. A gallon of anything is hard, right? On the field. Water is worse? Dude, I found out about water poisoning at a Smash tournament. I didn't know that was real. I thought it was a joke. Water poisoning? How much water causes you to just drown? <laughs> Drowning is when water gets in your lungs. It's not when water gets in your stomach. I guess I guess if you drank so much water, it would it would get full up to here and then it would it would overflow into your lungs. I think. Eventually you would overflow. Yeah, I think you're right. It would be a couple gallons, right? <laughs> That's water in your lungs. Unlike this rule, which is extremely dumb and at the game on the Unlike this rule, Ooh. which is extremely dumb Nine. and has cost teams games for no reason. According to MLB rules, you are not allowed to purposely use detached equipment to field a ball. Meaning Ooh. if a fielder takes off his glove and throws it at a ball, that is an automatic triple. This is rare, but it does happen. Mm. It also means players can't catch a ball in their jersey or pants and still make an out. <laughs> Okay, I, I will say, dude, I, I get why the 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 equipment thing is a rule, right? Because then everybody would just be stripping all game. Like, you'd be throwing out your shirt, your pants, your shoes. Like, I get why, but that would be really fucking cool. That would be really cool. If you could use anything to block the ball. <laughs> Imagine hitting an and one out. So he hits the ball up, you throw the glove up there, the glove catches the ball, you catch the glove. Catch <laughs> this a guy ball doesn't know where the ball is. jersey or pants. You got a little, you got a little baseball, baby. Right there, you got a little, got a little thing going on right there. Don't make an out. 
That's what Nick Pavetta did in 2017, and even though it was impressive and wasn't called, technically this was illegal. <laughs> it also means that if a catcher removes their mask and- Bro, if that was me, if that wasn't illegal, I would pitch, and then I'd be like Batman. I'd be like, oop, <laughs> just hold my shit out, undo the buttons, catch that shit. Don't throw that shit in here. Everybody, every single person on defense in the outfield are just opening up. <laughs> Uses it to touch a ball oh, in any funny. way whatsoever. That is illegal. <laughs> this happened in 1995 with the bases loaded and the winning run on third. The ump didn't no even way. remember it was a rule, but when Tommy Lasorda pointed it out, the ump had to call it no Bringing in the game winning run because even though it had no impact on the play whatsoever a catcher did this what this was also called on the rays in 2011 and even their own manager didn't know the rule even though the ump was technically <laughs> right joe maddie completely lost his mind and got ejected I'll get but did you know according to the rules even though joe maddie got ejected he doesn't technically have to leave the game why do why do umpires do that why do umpires have the big like i like i it's so theatric is it so the audience knows like, it, it is fun. It's very fun. I love it. It's great. But it's so... For what? Yes, there is a loophole. It's called showmanship? It's a fucking umpire. That's not a thespian. In the rules that allow ejected players and managers to oh, stay Oh, that guy had a pretty good one. This guy This guy keeps it kind of low-key. There he is a underhand. loophole Watch in the rules right here. that allow ejected players... He gets the uh, fuck out of here. <laughs> Just a little bit down like that and managers to stay at the game bobby like valentine actually i've gone to umpire training and they tell you not to do this so you don't end up on a dumb umpire bloopers list <laughs> on strike two strike two you're out of there what <laughs> you just forget to count you get the number wrong <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> Foul two. Tried this after getting ejected in 1999. Instead Umpires of leaving the funny, game, dude. he put on a fake mustache and sunglasses and managed the rest of the game <laughs> in a disguise. The umpires never noticed. However, this was illegal and he was fined and suspended the next day. But if he would have went fuck? into the stands dressed like this, it would have been completely legal. Because according to the MLB rulebook, even if a player or manager is ejected, they what? can stay at the game as long as they re-enter the stadium as a fan and watch in the stands without a uniform on. I mean, that Unfortunately, makes sense. nobody takes advantage yeah, of this rule sense. because nobody knows it's a rule. Uh -huh. Something else that nobody knows is that according to the rules, you don't have to touch home plate in order to score. This sounds mind-blowing due to the many examples sound of crazy. players accidentally missing bases oh and getting their God. runs taken away. But in very rare cases, players don't have to touch any bases and can still score. In 1976, oh no, Chris Chambliss hit a walk-off home run to win the pennant and all hell broke loose. Thousands of fans Touch started home. storming the field. Touch he home! was basically tackled, oh ran like over dead multiple rising. fans trying to touch home, <laughs> but was so overwhelmed, he just ran into the dugout and never touched it. What the fuck? <laughs> he never ended the game. That game is still going, technically. I, dude, I feel like this... I would not believe that this shit was real if this channel didn't have footage of it. I cannot believe this is real. Umpires can eject random people. You're done! <laughs> oh, Parker just got tossed. Oh. Wow. Never mind. I, I think I've seen this before. I remember this. Somebody showed us this, and I couldn't believe this. I, I think I do remember. 
<laughs> you can't throw out the music guy. It's fucking amateur league. It was very funny to play three blind mice to a <laughs> to an umpire. He's just seething. Oh, oh my god, dude. Umps could throw out anyone in the stadium. Not anyone. Could they throw out security? Could they throw out stadium employees? Could I throw out the owner of the stadium? The announcers? <laughs> I, I want to be an umpire. I want to have that level of power. Throw out. Yeah, what happens if you try to throw out another umpire? What is it the first person to do this? Whoever gets their throw off first? <laughs> oh. Wow. Never mind. <laughs> Derek Dye was just ejected from the game. Derek, Derek oh Dye was ejected from the game. That is Thank awesome. You, Fat that is absolutely awesome. I, Derek Dye was ejected from the game. Put him in the box score, Dye. Wow. That's amazing. That is so cool. That is unbelievable. You can eject anyone from the game for any reason. Derek Dye, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's tremendous. Yeah, by the way, this I was going to say, this commentary is just like a college kid. <laughs> I guess I'm the umpire of my own stream. That's true. I could eject any of you for any reason. I've been pretty good lately. After the game, Chambliss was told to go back onto the field and touch home to, to make it official. Home. He was Wait. escorted by security, but still never touched home because the fans oh had stolen God. all the bases. Under the rules at the time... That sounds like a good movie. He has to go find the person that took home, home. To finish that game, finally before he passes. Chambliss was technically out. This run should have never counted and the game should have kept going. But shortly after, MLB made the- <laughs> From Paramount Studios, taking home. <laughs> Chambliss rule that says, if fans rush the field and physically prevent players from touching the bases, the base is still awarded to the batter. I guess. Meaning that touching home isn't always required. Luckily for Chambliss, MLB was willing to change the rules for him. Aww. These players weren't so lucky. They got in trouble just for their cleats, because according to MLB, cleats as flashy as these <laughs> and as boring as these are both illegal. Oh, I thought the first one was too flashy and distracting, and then they said the second one. Coney, go back. I, I saw it too. The rules I didn't... For him. These players... Okay, I, I thought that was what I saw. Yeah, okay. 2010 when one of illegal MLB's cleat policy first faced backlash in 2010 when one of their biggest characters Jeez. Brian Wilson decided to wear these incredibly flashy cleats in the all-star game this wasn't a problem but when he tried to wear them in a real game oh, the opposing say, the manager game. complained saying they were too distracting Somehow, MLB agreed, banned them, and fined Wilson $1,000. He responded by coloring the cleats in with a Sharpie so he could continue to wear them. As dumb as this ruling sounds, it is nothing compared what? to when MLB banned Ben Zobrist from wearing these cleats, which were the opposite of distracting. These cleats were supposed to honor Ernie Banks and other players who wore black cleats back in the day. Zobris was warned by MLB and sent a cease and desist letter that banned them in 2018, but, causing backlash from players across the league. But okay. even though these cleats are as normal and as boring as they come, they're still technically illegal because according to MLB rules, players must wear cleats that feature at least 51% of their team's primary color. Dude. What? Really? Huh. As dumb. 
Who makes the rules for this shit, dude? Because this rule is, it can't be known as the dumbest rule. Because thankfully, MLB has changed this rule in 2019, allowing players to wear cleats as cool and as boring okay. as they'd like. Yo, it's Meaning Batman. these cleats are no longer banned. Okay. But did you know that little people are? Yes, this rule dates back to an incident in 1951. Okay, what's your guess on why? Take a guess. Superstition, small strike zone. Ooh, I like that. Probably a strike zone. That's a good call. The stealing the kid incident. <laughs> that makes sense. I was going to say it's because they're too distracting. Like, they're, they're too funny. Like, they thought that shit was so funny back then. When St. Louis Browns owner Bill Veck wanted to make a spectacle focus. to drive up attendance, he quietly signed Eddie Goodell, a three foot seven man with dwarf. Why are you saying Cody? I'm not saying this. This is the 20s, the 30s. Have you seen The Wizard of Oz? It was very inhumane. Fism to a major league contract. Then, as a surprise, had him jump out of a birthday cake in the middle of a game. Goodell was later put into the game as a pinch what? hitter. The umpires tried to stop this, but after proving that Goodell was on the team, they realized there was no rule against him playing. He went into the box, and since his strike zone was so small, ah. he got walked on four straight pitches. Yeah, 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 MLB yeah. found out about this, got pissed, You're and right. voided Goodell's contract two days later, which set the precedent <laughs> that little people were an unfair advantage and were not allowed in Major League Baseball. But that has nothing on this rule, which is by far the dumbest rule in Major League Baseball. And is so dumb that even though it is still a rule, players have refused to follow it for decades. According to this rule, Joey Votto high-fiving this fan, giving him a bat and jersey is illegal. Freddie Freeman wishing Pete Alonso a great season on first base is illegal. You've seen the here comes the pizza incident. I do, but I don't remember it. I know what it is, but I don't remember it. Ichiro apologizing to this woman while chasing down a foul ball and making her entire year is also illegal. They can't interact, yes, because right? MOB rules it? forbid players, yep. coaches, or anyone in don't uniform be talking to nobody. fraternizing with any fan or opposing player no at any point while in they uniform. They might be cheating, This bro. rule was made decades ago because the league was worried players were gambling and players on opposing teams being friends was a bad luck. Gambling with the audience. <laughs> You're in the stands. Hey, I'll bet you 750 bucks I catch this next pop fly. Well, okay. <laughs> Luckily, almost everyone in baseball ignores this rule. But believe it or not, mean? some people are trying to enforce it more. According to this report, Joe Torrey, who is in charge of... Bro, stop the fraternizing. These two are fraternizing. MLB on-field operations made it a point to discourage players <laughs> from being friendly with one another once fans were let into the Stop stadium. fraternizing! Because he thought it was a bad look. Fortunately, this has look. done almost nothing to slow down the constant banter between <laughs> players and fans throughout the game. <laughs> I was popping emotes. By the way, ad starting now. Can't save you. Sorry. I forgot. See you guys in a few minutes. <laughs> Pop the primes right now. Pop them up. <laughs> Ooh. Stream is over anyway. How dumb do you have to be to think the stream is over? And how dumb do you have to be to not read the fine print that appears when you start browsing in incognito mode? Did you know that it says that your activity might still be visible to your employee, your school, or your ISP? How can they even call it incognito to really stop people from seeing the sites you visit? You got to do what I do. What's that? Why? That's visit ExpressVPN. Think about all the times you've used Wi-Fi at a coffee shop, a hotel, or even your parents' house. Without ExpressVPN, every site you visit could be logged into by the admin of that network. 
And that's still true even when you're in incognito mode. I mean, do you really want your parents to see what you've been looking at? Chat? Hmm? What's more, your, <laughs> your home internet provider can also see and record your browsing data. In the U.S., they're legally allowed to sell that data to advertisers. ExpressVPN is an app that encrypts all your network data and reroutes it to a, a network of secure servers so that your private online activity stays just that, private. ExpressVPN works on all your devices and is super easy to use. The app literally has one button. You tap it to connect, and your browsing activity is secure from prying eyes. So stop letting strangers invade your online privacy. Protect yourself at ExpressVPN slash Coney. That's my link. You can check it out in the panel below. And you can use that link to get three extra months free. That's right, three extra months ExpressVPN for free. Check out ExpressVPN, and thanks for sponsoring the stream. I got to get that NVIDIA thing. <laughs> the scripts are like this long, and I would love to just do this <laughs> the whole time. Wide open. You should pre-record these. That's a good idea. Let's hear a word from Pasconi, and I put it on the TV. <laughs> I like that, actually. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. It's bedtime. I don't know why I did that. Uh, I'll see you guys on Tuesday. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. We're going to Void because Void won the Wolfie tournament. Void won the Wolfie Invitational, the, the thing. You know the thing. So we're going to go say congratulations. All right. I'll see you guys Tuesday. I might do a secret stream because I've been playing Hi-Fi Rush and Pikmin 2. If you want to know where the secret stream is, you got to subscribe. And then go to the Discord. Bye. I don't know if I will. I might. Don't get your hopes up. Shut up. How I love this pretty yeah, thing. Now I'll rest my weary head. You might Good night. Hi-Fi Rush is fun. I might go play that. <laughs>